they've replaced these this week. Love them or hate them, you know, really was a breakthrough thing, wasn't it? Like actual true wireless. I had wireless headphones at the time, but had a cable linking together. I mean, there were heaps of jokes about them, how, oh, you know, you'll lose them and whatnot. Oh, I had a pair new, but I, I took them back just because I hated that they didn't have any noise cancelling. And then they released the Pros, which have been my favourites this entire time. But AirPods, mate, like, you gotta pay Apple's money to get the look at least. Like, there is no such thing as cheap look-alike AirPods, mate. Not a single bootleg to be found. This is the bootleg AirPod episode. <laughs> yeah, boy. So we're gonna start from the lowest and work our way up. All right, so these first ones are basically the ones that Wish send you if you get those like free ones. But I noticed they had Shrek green ones. I went, no way they didn't have Shrek green ones. Oh, Manuel. Uh, oh, that's a nice cable. Oh, yeah. That's not just made out of scrap wire at all. <laughs> Give me them, boys. Give me them. Oh, what? Oh! I thought because it was in this guy that it was making it look washed out. And I was expecting this kind of green. But it looks like a white shirt after like someone's put it through the wash with a green highlighter or something. Where's our bo- Oh, dear. It's strange. It's been flocked. It's actually kind of soft feeling. Oh, yeah, yuck. They feel- they feel great. Oh, they're actually- f they're fuzzy feeling. How big is it compared to the regular guy? I mean, it's- it's a lot bigger. They're, they're a lot bigger. <laughs> these are meant to fit in ears, are they? Great, now I gotta try and pair these up. They are in pairing mode. I'm trying to pair them up, but I can't- I can't find them. Oh, oh, I think I got it. <laughs> okay. All right, I can hear them. All right. So these are delightful in two ways. First off, uh, nothing but top end. No bass, no mids. It's a t -t 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 -t. It sounds like you're listening to music after someone else has already listened to it. It's like as if you've just crouched next to someone with open back headphones. But oh, the best feature is that the entire time, the left one's going from some sort of communication noise. Starting to think that these are really cheap and nasty. But they do have a microphone. Well, it's one time I'm like driving to work, hey, and like totally sucks and I don't want to go to work. And then like, I realize I, like, I don't have a job, hey. Like I've never had a job. Like I don't know what it's like. <laughs> and then like, I, remember, I don't have a car, mate. I'm like just laying on the floor in my own filth, hey. I need some money, please. They actually sound worse than like bootleg MP3 players from 2003. That is, that is amazing. That's no progress made at all. Oh, they're built lovely. <laughs> That's where the spicy pillows kept. So these next ones I literally found at the petrol station. I paid too much money for it, and I'm not ashamed to tell you, for 40 bucks I got... The Fuse Airbuds. Again, just straight up knockoff AirPods. <laughs> I actually hate knockoff stuff. Like coming up with original design, love it or hate it, is insanely difficult. Come on, AirBuds me up. Give them. Oh good, it comes with the exact same cable. It's the exact same cable. Give me the guy. Give me my guy. Guilt. Whoa, is that a metal hinge? No, it's play. <laughs> Hang on a minute. These feel worse than the other ones. But they are the same size, ooh, almost. What cable is that? <laughs> right, it's a micro USB disguised as a lightning. Yeah, it's, it's the worst feeling micro USB I've ever felt disguised as a lightning. And you know, it's that little touch, it's, it makes me happy. Where are my boys? Okay, they got a little bit extra stem on them and they feel like crap. Let's not forget that. But yeah, keeping the chunk situation down pretty, pretty okay. Got my special charging arrangement here. We can see an LED through the incredibly thin plastic. Actually, yeah, they haven't put a porthole for that LED. They just knew <laughs> that it's so thin that you'd be able to see it. How do I, how do I use my boys? Oh, you stupid crappy things always have a button on the back that doesn't do anything. Oh, oh, it's doing it by itself. Oh, by accident. They actually come up as Fuse Airbuds. Maybe these are good. Oh, well. When I took it out, it pulls the music. Not bad. The right one doesn't work at all, mind you. So, you know, points lost there. The other one's working fine. This guy does not want to play. <laughs> as soon as I pull it out, it just turns off. I cannot get the right one to work. I can't do it. Left one is totally fine. The one that I can hear, again, it just sounds like nothing but mids. Like really thin and really crappy. Ugh. So like, 
upon reflecting, after like begging you guys for money, hey, and realizing I'm just like jobless, lying in my own filth, I figured like maybe instead of money, mate, like you could offer me a job, hey, like, but I don't want to do any work, but like I'd like to get paid. And, like, I don't want to do any work, though. Happy, I bought one. Easily one of the most requested things ever is one of those stupid, pointless, giant AirPod speakers. It, it came in perfect condition, by the way. This is how I got it. It's a white one, apparently. It still could be wrong. There it is, looking like a nugget. HD microphone. Fantastic. I didn't think this thing would... <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see which one we get in this horribly ruined box. Oh, what a truly special cable <laughs> It goes from micro USB to regular USB and headphone jack I, d I didn't know there was a market for like such a janky cable. Oh Whoa, look at <laughs> You know, this, this is fun. Gotta immediately get it on the charge, mate. Oh, do I use the freak cable? I don't want to use one of these other janky ones Oh Oh my gosh, we got competition. Bluetooth mode. Power on. Bluetooth mode. <sighs> See, that's... Oh, that's how you do it. Alright, let's listen to this idiot. <laughs> Hey, I didn't tell you to stop. Hey, what? Power off. You swine. Regardless, sounds like Frank Poo. It is dreadful. <laughs> I'd love to one grid it, but I like the aesthetic of a giant AirPod. It's totally got me. It's the only thing going for it is the fact it looks like a giant AirPod. I'm sorry, this one has just started playing over in the corner. The sexy speaker lost the signal, but old mate's still going. This one's still going. They're both still going. Sexy speaker for shame. Oh gosh, how do I use the microphone? Mode? FM mode. Oh no. I'm trying to record with it. And <laughs> What? What's wrong with it? What? 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 Oh no! I don't think we ever have to listen to anything that was recorded through this. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, what a pile of junk. Couldn't resist the grit was anchoring for it. Oh no, it's still on somehow. Oh no, things that oh let's all right. So these last ones I've got for you, May. Right, you could argue on paper that they have more features than the original boys because i'm pretty sure that your set of airpods don't have a screen in it <laughs> you know this is the guy that inspired this whole episode when i saw this on the internet i was like no no they wouldn't have done that i like the high quality jpeg they've slapped in there like this stupid nuggets can't have anything decent main secondary switching Makes sense to me. Three true battery display. Yes. Oh, and my favorite by far, and I'm so glad they put this on the box. The new version of the pop-up window pairing open the charging box to match the connection. That's one word and no full stop. Love it. Pop-over pairs new upgrades. I mean, everything on this box is information I need. I love this little seal of quality here. It says 100% original, real capacity. In other words, means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what? Patented products, counterfeiting is not allowed, you stupid- Can't throw the nugget until we've seen it, I don't want to ruin it. Oh, I can't wait. The superior AirPods, the best ones in the world. Yours don't have a screen in it. Oh, wait, this is a- We'll get to the nugget in a bit. Oh, you're kidding me! <laughs> it's the exact same cable! The exact same- why is this box so big? There's nothing in here. There, there is nothing in here. Oh, the Manuel. Oh, goody. Oh, I love it when they fold out like this. Blah, 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 blah. We can figure it out. Here we go. I'm excited. Whoa. Hey, wow. 
These are way square. And look how scratched the screen is. It's been, is that a screen protector on it? <sighs> okay. That's okay then. And again, trying to make the micro USB look like lightning. This is weird, man. <laughs> it's got that JPEG on it. Hang on. The pixel density is okay. Hey, if I turn off some lights around here. Oh, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Oh wait, this feel it's made out of nothing. It's it feels like it's going to snap. Wow. Look at that. They actually got the size. Mm. The case is chunkier and it's a literally a brick. I'm not gonna lie, this screen is actually really handy at the moment. You know, it's actually telling me how much battery it's got. It's helping me pair it to the phone. Like they're flocked, and because they're the proper size, they fit fine. Oh am goodness. They're okay. They're okay. They've got base and top end, right? Wow. I would have rather spent my money on some KBs or KZs, right? Which sound fantastic for being cheap. Like, it's that kind of cheap good. It's the fact that it's got base and top end. And the screen is fun. And I gotta see if I can get a picture of Bitey Frank on it. How do you get photos on this stupid thing? It doesn't say. <laughs> uh, it doesn't say. Oh, what? I've just done the rounds with this guy with all of my computers and I can't get it to USB talk with anything. I don't know how to get photos on it. I don't know. Oh, it's such a bummer. Well, at least I can yell into the microphone. So like, I finally found an employer that totally fits my lifestyle, mate. He's all like, nah, man, you don't gotta do no work, mate. Nah, you don't even have to get out of your filthy floor, mate. But it's like, only problem is like, he's not paying me nothing to do it. Like, the, the, the short answer is, I'm self-employed now, I work for myself, hey. I haven't fixed any problems, though. The microphone's okay! You know, it's actually probably on par with the regular AirPods, and <laughs> they've never had good mics. That's wireless for you. Pfft, at least you didn't lie on a box like this guy with the HD microphone, BS. This is me trying to record. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, mate, because one dollar a month, I do it to videos. I'm going to keep talking so the names can scroll for longer because I do appreciate all you people. You make this hot mess come alive. So those are bootlegs of the AirPods. What about the AirPod Pros? Well, mate, big shame, actual. Lenovo, the live pods. Like, this is straight up knocking off. Lenovo, I thought you were above this. The live pods. So we're going to have a smell of these and just see what all the hoo ha's about and you know, if they're worth being just kind of cheap bootlegs, anyways. So thanks so much, mate. I'll see you all next time. Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. Like, you guys make all this happen. I keep saying it, but it's true. You guys let me make this the way I want to, and I love yous for it. And, like, bootleg AirPod Pros. <laughs> Lenovo, really? I really thought they were above this. I mean, they're just straight up knockoffs. Like, <laughs> unashamed. Oh, man. Hey, this is a real thing. And there's, like, people saying that they're actually decent. Oh, Dick Smith. I mean, I'm not surprised if they're okay. It's actually not that hard to make semi-decent headphones nowadays. Hey, you know, KB is do it for like 20 bucks. You can have amazing sounding headphones. I do take offense to the knockoff design. Like, love or hate Apple or their AirPods or whatever, coming up with an original design is so difficult. Copying is easy, right? That's why there's only so many original artists and so many cover bands. Let me in. Please. It's all in Chinese. I can't read the outside. Ugh. The out the disdain keep <laughs> Right for people in the future, we've come from the, the bootleg airpod episode where there was heaps of these cables and look what this idiot came with. Only it's ooh, it's USB C <gasps> Oh what? Man, I haven't seen a bootleggy USB-C cable yet. Oh, full circle. That's so cute and gross. Bud bits. The Manuel, which is hmm, quite thick and roadmappy. Chinese. The, the headphones, you plug them in, you yell at them, it's all good. That's it. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, look at this groovy ridge cut into it or something. Can't be exactly like the stinking AirPod Pros. Oh, let's, let's get the family photo here. Yeah, to call them inspired by the AirPod Pros is a slight understatement. Oh, Lenovo, how have you sunk so far? It's, it's the look. Oh, wow, they go in terrible. <laughs> yeah, these are nasty. Oh, oh, they don't even close. It's like pits of crap in there or something. Yuck. When you put AirPods away, it feels like, yeah, snappy. This is gross. It doesn't even shut properly. Battery indicator's nice. Why wouldn't these be plugged in the box so they can charge? I hate that. Oh, goody. They actually have touch controls on the sides for play and pause. I know that sounds like a really neat feature for me. I hate it. I was literally just adjusting it to get them to fit better, and I paused the music. They're pretty bassy, but... Like, they're totally a 7 out of 10, and I, I fully stamp, it's like, yep, hey, Desert Island situation, if this is all I had, I feel like I'm living like a king. Although, I gotta test the microphone. I thought it's one time, I'm trying to make banana bread, hey, and like, I didn't have any bananas, because like, I don't know what food shopping is, so I thought I'd give it a go. So I went down the supermarket, hey, and like, I couldn't find where the bananas are, I just figured like, like, the important thing about bananas is that they're long, so I just found like another long whatever it was. Turns out I grabbed a zucchini. And I made zucchini bread, and I, it was okay actually. Well, everything everything turned out alright. I mean, I did go bankrupt and the house burned down, but it doesn't matter. Zucchini bread. Wow, that mic stinks. <laughs> <laughs> That's a horrible microphone. That's worse than the bootleg ones that I looked at. Oh, uh, I mean, I do stand by that. You know, I've had companies reach out and say, hey, we've made these copies of the AirPod whatevers, and we swear that ours sound better than the original. You should try them. I'm never interested. I really don't like copycat stuff. You know, like, Lenovo only did this because, you know, idiots like me will pick them up to have a look at them and laugh at them and get more coverage. So, you know, well done, Lenovo. You win. <laughs> Whether you like the design or not, it's really hard to come up with stuff like this. Yeah, just seeing companies so quickly knock it off. I remember when people were making fun of the stems. I remember when people were making fun of the fact that you didn't have a cable joining them together. And then people will fall in line very quickly when it's time to knock them off for money. Look at the case! It doesn't even close! It doesn't even close all the way. I forget how much I paid. It wasn't much. I mean, the fact that this USB-C is super neat, but oh dear. Oh, my book cell. Sound-wise, yeah, pretty typical cheap headphones that are Okay, everything else about them sucks. The case sucks, the microphone sucks, the cable sucks, and I don't like bootleggy stuff. Get, 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 get! Well, th thanks for watching, and... Oh, no! Ah! Truly offensive products. Not just offensive to the eye. Like, I've already done a video about this. It's just the most uggo MP3 player I think I've ever found. <laughs> Nothing symmetrical. Like, not even the screen to the controls. And that flat spot is where they put their headphone jack. Mmm, inspired. But you just see how much plastic waste comes with this idiot. Like, half a T-Rex's worth of dinosaur juice and oil to make it. But that's the thing, guys. This isn't the worst offender that I have in the horde. Of course, I'm hiding the funny bit. Now, this guy's brand new, which means I'm gonna put gloves on, because you never know what turns into sticky goop. Black gloves, mate, because we're, we're serious this time. So you can see from the front, it's a cube. L oh, look at the size of it. It's like the size of an apple or an onion. Wow, look at the size of the wall adapter this thing comes with. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, if you're pairing a nugget that's like a witch's apple, I mean, that's, that's you need that big power. Okay, everyone. It's time to reveal. It's it's the cube. <laughs>
<laughs> oh man, I thought this cantankerous nugget was bad. Like, this is actually MP3 player. So, what is it? They've cleverly coded the cube MP3 player. Still better than what Sony names their things. Gosh, the standards were low back in the mid thousands, right? It was worth mentioning that it's USB 2.0 and MP3. Like, not saying it plays or anything, it just says MP3. Oh boy, stink buds. Can't wait to smell those. Included a nugget. Rubber protect. Is that what that is? Oh! <laughs> That's a case? It's like, why a mesh of rubber is a case? Oh, voice recording. Fe with a high-sensitive built-in microphone, it can be used as a professional voice recorder. Those are their words, not mine. You betcha I'm gonna be testing that, mate. Upgradable firmware. Well, how about upgradable hardware? In other words, don't buy this. One of the smallest MP3 player. Player? Not s okay. A fully featured MP3 player housed in a miniature cube that fits in the palm of your hand. This is big slab of nothing for what? Just these little accessories? Why would you make the illustration so big? I can't get over how tiny it is on such a... That's totally a collectible, mate. So like, you know, we've got to open it carefully around the borders, right? So we could put it back in the collection. Give me my cube. Get to this nugget in a bit. Oh gosh, a disc, cable. Whoa, here's the case, guys. This wire mesh of nothingness. Maybe we'll have to see if it protects against the one grid. My money bets it doesn't. Mm, mm, wow, these have been carelessly thrown in there. What, do they have surplus on shoelaces or something? Okay, they've done it. They've really done it this time. The, this is, the, these are the worst headphones I've ever dealt with. Oh my God, like, what do you do? Put your head through it or something? And does the cube just dangle? My cube. Oh, hey, it bit me. Oh, goody. They don't say left or right on them. That's how you know they're hi-fi. Maybe all the answers are in here. Oh, the Digiblock number 5004. It, it's so catchy. This is a chunky book. Oh man, look, they got little illustrations and everything. So, oh, oh, hang on. Why is it smack of effort now? Oh, wow, well, look, it's all caricatures of the most wasteful idiot thing there is. Do not drop the unit. Listening to loud music may cause hearing loss. I like that the person there is just not really fussed by it. It's just like, oh, well, there you go. That's actually really cute and I really like it. Special features, world's smallest MP3 player. Right, I know we're getting to the nugget in a bit, but there's there's an issue. Yes, it is absolutely tiny in size. I 100% agree. But the biggest deal with stuff that's portable and pocketable is how thick it is. Look at this horribly smashed nano. Look how stinking thin it is. It's why giant smartphones just slip straight into pocket. Pockets. They're thin. Th this has the same thickness as it does width. It's a cube. So like this in your pocket, it's just going to be jamming right into your leg. Oh no. Well done. From a top-down perspective, you've created the smallest MP3 player. But then you also haven't created the smallest MP3 player. Necklace earphone. More like headache, headache. Oh, and it's even doing the shuffle vibe where it's using the earphone jack as the USB jack as well. Amazing. You know, this is actually one one of the better manuals I've seen this year. Like that includes the Samsung Beans. Like this is better than the Beans one. Convenient functions, there's only two of them. Hey, I'll give you a convenient function. It fits in the bin easy. Oh look, it's that USB cable <laughs> somehow. Wow, look at the ferrite on that. It's to control data noise and whatnot. It stinks too. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm wearing gloves, man. This is this is gooey feeling. Can't use this because it's Americana flavored, but I'm pretty sure this isn't that important. A brand new nug. Ooh. Gotta put it in its terrible case. I got the case on. Uh, it leaves a lot to be desired, to be honest. Like, that's wrapped around the controls. Why isn't it wrapped around everything else? Look, the grit can get right to it. <laughs> Actually, I probably, I probably should turn it on first. <laughs> Whoopsie doodles. Come on, mate. Shrug off. The oh, it was only a gentle gritting, mate. It was only gentle. Yeah! Whoa, that is dim. Oh, that screen is tiny. <laughs> oh, BS. Look how small the screen actually is. It doesn't even fill this tiny little cube, idiot. Oh. Well, I've taken a screenshot on how it comes up on the computer. It's called the Interpol. 
Sekunden. Why? <laughs> it says MP3 player. Like, can you read the smallest, stupidest? <laughs> oh man, how do we, how do I navigate this? Look at my eyes, guys. I am struggling to deal with this. It's got a screensaver. Whoa, look at it go. Oh, will it get to the corner and bounce straight out? <gasps> Oh, oh wow, this is tortured. Are you kidding me? Oh, music play, v voice settings, D delete. Right, voice, yes, v voice. No file, let me change that. How do I record something? Oh man, my hand's cramping up. This thing is an ergonomic nightmare. Don't make me read the manual. Yeah, that's the problem with these crappy nuggets. Like they're impossible to use. Safety, special features. Is this an OLED display? <laughs> Wait, is it an LCD or is it an OLED, guys? Like, make up your minds. How do you make a stinking recording? Oh, oh, long press menu key to record and press play key to pause and resume recording. Oh gosh, this is long press the menu key. Oh, it's doing it! So what, it's one time, mate, I got out of a taxi and I got like five minutes down the road and realised, oh no, mate, I left my Cube MP3 player in the taxi, mate. It's like the best MP3 player ever. It's like tiny and hard to use. It also sticks in your pocket somehow, mate. Like, so I, I just started running, man. I started running to any car, not even taxis, mate. I just started screaming at people saying like, where's my cube, mate? I need me cube. We gotta go to Bendigo, mate, to get me cube. And like, I couldn't find my cube, man. So I'm like, just punching people's cars, mate, breaking windows. And it turns out, like, it was in my back pocket the whole time. I'm in jail. I didn't expect it to be easy, and it wasn't. It was nightmarish to get that recording done. And would you believe it's not good? Imagine if someone uses this as a professional voice recorder. Well, apparently it's got Scarlet Fire on it. I'll be the judge of that. Power on. Bluetooth mode. Mm, you know it. Dirty. Auxiliary mode. Oh, it's an MP3 player, in it? Well, we're getting the old Diablo out, mate, because we're gonna smell possibly the worst earbuds I've held. Just because I, I don't understand it. I don't know why they've done it like this. Oh, look how short they are. Wow, that's really interesting. They're worse than usual. <laughs> <laughs> you got all this extra effort here, but you don't make these bits worth it? They better blow up. Oh wow, they smell though. <laughs> it just smells like chemicals. <laughs> Wow, no volume out them at all. I mean, there you go, because it's nothing but top end. No mids, no basses. These were special. Oh, my cube. Well, I'm glad I didn't need the dingus disc. And funny how, yeah, didn't need this at all. You don't need this big, stonking charging brick for such a... That's it. Oh, wow. There's grit going everywhere. Oh, guys, the case didn't help it. The case didn't do anything. Can we push its silly guts out and look at the inside? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Whew, sharp. Wow, man. They really squished the guts in there, huh? Look at that. It's like a little sandwich. That's, that's kind of impressive. So is that big glob of hot glue there. Now imagine if they turned all this engineering into actually something that you'd want. Because, you know, funny enough, this is an original nugget. I've never seen one of these before, and I never want to see one again. But I just can't get over all of this waste. All of this. <laughs> this. If you believe no one bought this, guys. Well, that's it. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, because my $1 a month, I do work to videos. And actual transparency, this is an extra video this week because of the week of fuffiness with my bootleg AirPod one. <laughs> Whole bunch of people tune in first thing to catch my vids, and I'll let you guys down. You guys mean the world to me. You saved me from unemployment during COVID. So, an extra vid to say sorry for the kerfuffle. So, thanks so much, mate. And I'll see you all next
Merry Birthmas. And how dare you remind me how much time has passed. So in this video, I'm more interested in what happened before the iPod, because honestly, that's where all the nuggets live. <laughs> the Comotron. We know that this was a huge hit, right? Spawn the mono, the, the souffle. No, no. Probably my favorite little fact. Oh, they don't fit. Look, it's the, the support. No, no. Oh. Quick, Shuffle, get in there. Yeah! Mini can help out too. <laughs> Guys, come on, we can still see you. What kind of backstage crew are you? Get out of it. My favorite little tidbit, this guy and this guy are only six years apart. Six years! All right, clear out, you. Oh, what an embarrassing effort from you two. Come with me. So, yeah, the iPod, yeah? Humongous success. Well, eventually. Context is everything, and it's actually amazing how dangerous of a move this product was. A lot of people forget that in the 90s, Apple nearly went bankrupt. Get some 90s Macs on screen. Whew. Can you believe people didn't want these? Steve Jobs had just come back, basically cancelled everything that they were working on. They were just like, stop it. <laughs> no one wants these. The iMac had come out and Apple was wet from the gutters. They were out of the gutters, but they were soaking wet. Like to team up with Apple at the time. I mean, yeah, today that'd be a no brainer. But back then it was like, uh, you guys are kind of wet from the gutters, huh? The inventor of the iPod. Tony Fidel. Tony had already been working on an MP3 player with his own company. No one was buying MP3 players yet. It was so early. Tony just wanted to work with Apple as like a consulting gig. He showed Steve Jobs his designs. He saw this one and Steve Leach just grabbed it and said, this is what we're making and you're going to help us make it. The craziest detail, right, is it was to be released Christmas 2001. They only really got started in May. 2001. That's nuts. And I love it from all the other articles coming out. We can see a development iPod. Look at this big beige. I mean, that's King Nugget. When it launched, it sold like 125,000 units till like the end of the year. Pretty low key sales, really. And Tony approached Steve and said, Are you guys going to stick with this? Because he'd had the run with other companies where they'd release a product and then just can it and move on and he'd have to start all over again. And Steve was like, Yeah, we're doubling down. And I think it was something like 16 to 18 iterations of the iPod he had his hand in. Wow, what amazing career. It's really easy to take for granted these controls and the way it works, because I'm going to show you, <laughs> I'm going to show you some guys that came before this, the guys that inspired this. So for the uninitiated, like this is a five gigabyte device. And I'm going to tell you how stinking humongous that was. Look, it's a Samsung. Yup. This is from the year 2000. This is a year before the iPod. This was Samsung's go at it. 32 megabytes. <laughs> 32 megabytes. No screen, no nothing. You have to use the remote to see what you're doing. But look out, big capacity. The, <laughs> the Comotron. <laughs> Why is it called that? Why does it look like this? What's this distended part here? Flash storage is stinking expensive. It still is, but now a couple of hundred bucks will get you a couple of terabytes. This really was as much as you could put in there that was feasible to sell. So having a hard drive was just the only option at the time. But Apple didn't invent the hard drive MP3 player either. They were called jukeboxes. <laughs> yeah. You know it's 90s because it's got its dad case on. So the thing about hard drive music plays is that batteries have sucked for the longest time. It was when lithium ion was finally like accessible and like easy to put into things that like pocketable devices were really worth it. And so to have a PC hard drive spinning away in there, you're going to chew that battery in like 15 minutes. <laughs> and so the, the way that they make them work is they use the RAM as a cache. So basically the RAM could hold maybe two or three songs because the thing that takes longest is spin the hard drive up. It'll load three songs and play those. And that's how these survive drops, by the way, because more likely the drive wasn't spinning. But Apple didn't invent that. This is from 98, 97, invented by Compaq. I'm telling you, I can't believe I have one of these. I can't get it to turn on, but it is absolute rarity. Oh, it's correct. This is the very first ever hard drive jukebox. It was super nugget. You couldn't browse music. As soon as you checked another song, it would start playing it. You couldn't use it as storage. You couldn't plug it into the computer and put your homework on it. Nope, wouldn't do it. Yep, the PJB100. Reviews from back in the day basically just go, 
this is the future. This is how to do it. Don't forget, the high rollers at the time were rolling CD players. You could make an MP3 CD at some point and get heaps of music on there, but nowhere near this guy. Double kick it, this is from 03, when they got them so slim that they're basically just the circumference of a CD. And even still, it is a chonk monster. So now you're going, oh, well, so like Apple didn't invent the MP3 player, and like they didn't invent the hard drive player. Oh, but they were the first ones to make it popular though, to get it in the hands of people. Uh, pfft. No. <laughs> no. Nope. Oh my duck. The creative nomad jukebox. This was the darling of the year 2000 of like, if you want a jukebox, you go and get one of these. Apple actually pointed at this nugget in their keynote for the iPod and said, that's who we're going against. This technically inspired the iPod. Outputs galore, like two line outs and a line in. Full size chonk USB, that's always fun. Just controls everywhere. I'm guessing they just put like water on their fingers and flicked at it and wherever the water landed, that's where they put the buttons. And it's got a five gigabyte drive in it. I believe it's ones I was using in laptops at the time. These first iPods are super chunk, hey? I mean, look at the size of this boy. But then I go, ba ba do ba do do. <laughs> this is why this guy was so popular. It has a bigger screen, better controls. It only uses one cable to charge and sync. It's why Apple went with Firewire. It was the only one that could do it. Like USB 1.0 was molasses slow and just couldn't charge devices yet. USB had to grow into its shoes. It was not a slam dunk winner out the gates. Although that said, when the iPod launched, a lot of the hardcore still said, no, well, I prefer this. These do sound really good. And I think this is full of like Avishai Cohen or something. But there's more to the story. <laughs> yeah, it takes ah! brand new boys. Yes, today as a collector, this is way better because you can just quickly throw some batteries in it, play with your nugget, and then like take them out and put it away. But at the time, this sucked. In 2003, I got my first MP3 player. It was some little 128 megabyte Dick Smith guy. And I vividly remember standing in the supermarket, looking at the price of the batteries going, oh my gosh, I'm buying these today. And also the pain of listening to music, wandering off, coming back four hours later to find it still playing and going, ah! <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was the equivalent of like leaving your car running all night and your full tank of fuel's gone. Like, that's how it felt as a kid. Uh-oh. Oi. Oi. Oh, guys. <laughs> It was working last week. I was like, good, it works, we're ready. Oh. <laughs> You're not missing out on anything. You can see a tortured UI in these crappy... Give me back my boys. Stupid garbage. This was pulling 10 hours battery back then out of its lithium ion recharge. We'll just plug it in and off you go. This thing chews through those double A's. It wants to be plugged into a wall. But you can see it's got like a remote input there. It was something that was trying to be a little bit portable, but also like a hi-fi setup if you wanted, which is cool. Although one bad side was this was Mac only. It wasn't until the Windows version of iTunes came out that iPods really started selling. And it's basically why those freakish HP iPods existed, which was to shake the stigma that it was Mac only anymore. But I mean, you look at the early ads, it's the fact that you can put five gigs of music in your pocket. And it's all thanks to the micro little drives they have in these. And that's Toshiba. Toshiba came up with those. And the whole design was based around it. Yes, you had to use iTunes to use this, but just about every player tended to have their own software or music match or something. And the practice of being able to put music on, but then not take it off. Well, this guy did that too. And uh, you can thank record labels for that because they own the music, even if the artists don't care if people are downloading it. And it wasn't just these two. I mean, these were the main ones that people see and look at. Everyone was having a go. I mean, the competition was nuts. Look at this Conan looking idiot. This is before the iPod 2, the Arcos 6000 jukebox. Six gigs, ooh! It looks like this because I'm not sure. This is sealed new, I found this for like 50 bucks. Oh, uh, we'll smell this one day. Or how about the Hit Zip? A spin-off of zip drives. There was a really unreliable little pockety ones. Go check out LGR, he's done a thing about these. Eventually, Dell even had a go. This is my favorite ever, right? Because it's some sort of iPod mini competition or something. It's brand new, no one bought this. But my favorite detail is someone's written iPod on the side of it. <laughs> 
I mean, that's how popular the iPod got, is that no one called them MP3 players. They were just called iPods. Oh, poor Dell. <laughs> That's maximum shame. But wow, the risks Apple took, the risks everyone took. Each division at Apple's a really, really tight team making these things individually and specifically. And it's funny how this led to the iPhone. It really did. It was in 05 that they started working on a phone. And for the longest time, it had a click wheel on it. I'm being serious. They really were seriously considering it. But I love that these fugly nuggets is basically the birth of the SSD, the modern SSD that we find in everything. This is its ground zero. <laughs> for crap like this. Yes, the writing's on the wall for the iPod. You know, the iPod Touch is just a footnote now, even though it does run iOS 15, which is super fun. It's okay if some brands just take a bit of a breather. It doesn't mean the iPod's gone forever. Just for now, hey, perfect example. Dodge Challenger, absolute hero car from the 70s, right? Well, they stopped making them in 83 and didn't start again until 2008. And now they're a mainstay again. Now it's just like, oh yeah, classic Dodge Challenger. iPod just needs to take a break. It helped birth the modern smartphone, push the music industry into directions it never foresaw, encourage prolific downloading on the internet. Come on, that deserves a sit down, doesn't it? But it really has shaped the world as we know it. Love or hate Apple, what a beautiful nugget they made. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, mate, because one dollar a month, I do extra videos. Nearly no intro. We're doing the Comatron. <laughs> I've, been, I've wanted to open this so bad, and I've never had an excuse to. Like, how does this tie into anything at all? Unless we're talking about the vintage nuggets that shaped our world. So yeah, we're gonna take a smell of the Comatron and probably realize that it's so old that I have nothing that can sync with it. And so like, I'll, I'll see you all next time. When you turn out the lights, Frank gets brave. Look, it's brave, Frank. Being very brave. Frank, are you bravely licking your floor in the dark? Well, I've learned that Frank likes to lick the floor in the dark now. <laughs> oh no, she's all done. I don't know who you are. Hey, it's the after show. And yes, I'm wearing mismatched gloves because I ran out of white ones. I mean, it's fine. Why am I wearing gloves? Because it's the, the Comatron. <laughs> We've come from the 20th birthday episode and just those nuggets, man. It's called the Comatron C-3310B-128. I mean, whew. Mate, you guys must have been hanging out with Sony to come up with that name. It's a portable solid state MP3 audio player. Ooh, it can use a Mac OS. I hope I don't have to get the EPC out. <laughs> Seven segment LCD. Oh my gosh. We can see the very handsome user's manual from here. Oh good, it runs on two. Ah! And we got treasures. <laughs> USB cables back in the day were nuts. They were literally server grade. And now it's like, you know, thin spaghetti. And I'm anticipating these being turned to goop. Thus the gloves. All right, it's that package everyone loves Toledo ba -do -bo, ba -do -bo, ba -bo -bo. Uh, this is a historical nugget by the way so this actually will be going back in as you can see I'm trimming around it wasn't like that cube I did last week <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I didn't care about that oh what still still <laughs> absolute swine there we go all right we'll get oh so much plastic we'll get to the nugget in a bit it weighs nothing yeah oh goody Oh, that's nice. <gasps> Ooh, it's got some bats in there. Uh, we've got the lanyard, which is actually lovingly wrapped. Like, yeah. Uh, we've got the server grade cable. Is it mini USB? It's mini USB. I mean, I know that's really, really old, but mm, the stink buds. I mean, but this is fun. This isn't a bootleg. This is the real guy. So this is what they went. Yeah, let's ship these headphones. They, they look like bootlegs, to be honest. <laughs> oh, <laughs> then again, even old Sony's of the day had terrible earbuds. Like Apple earbuds get a lot of flack. All earbuds sucked. Oh man, we've got some genuine... Excels, right on. Well, I'm definitely using this MP3 player driver disc. I mean, it's it's a genuine Comatron one. Um, oh no, we do have to open it. I got to smell the Manuel. And people named Manuel just got really uncomfortable there, or excited. I don't know which which, which one's worse. Ooh, that's a handsome photo they took and then cropped it for this. What is MP3? I mean, this was early days. Or oh, was it? I need a date. How old is this guy? I thought this was before the iPod. Any. Any dates? Oh, it's a mystery nugget. I can't find a date on it. It smacks of the old though. Well, it can run on XP. So it's after that at least. All right, here we go. The Comatron. <laughs> this just juts out the side. Okay, that's where the memory card goes. 
Mmm. I like how it's already scratched from just being like rattled around in a box for so many years. That means this guy has traveled around. Um, I know I'm wearing gloves, but it feels like garbage. Look at the mold lines here. They just threw this thing together. Oh gosh, that is elegant, isn't it? Oh yeah, this is nice. <laughs> this this goes together good. Get in there. I'm gonna shatter this thing. It's it's made of nothing. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna lose the Comatron. This nightmare is happening. We're gonna lose the Comatron. Oh no, that's not coming off, is it? Oh, how do you turn it on? <laughs> Can you believe no one bought these ancient nuggets? Like you, you kind of- I'm guessing it's play, but it could be the batteries, that's the problem. Every one of these, you gotta use the manual. What is this MP3 play? I'm asking the same question. How do I turn it on? How to listen to MP3 music? Press the plays button- that's what I thought. Guys, I think our XLs are dead. Oh. Come with me. <laughs> that was quick. No. <laughs> well, I'm gonna see if I can just hook it. I mean, I don't need another one of these. I've actually just learned that I've discarded so many. I mean, I haven't thrown them out. I've just thrown them somewhere that I can't actually find a mini USB at the moment. <laughs> oh gosh, look at the length on this. Like, this is server equipment. They don't make them like this anymore. Please talk with a modern computer. Please. That's the worst mini USB I've ever used. Oh, <gasps> it has. <gasps> oh. Oh, look, it's doing it. Oh my gosh. If this works, I don't hate the Comatron. It's paused at zero bytes of 5.7 megabytes for Skylight Fire. Oh no. <laughs> nope, it's frozen. It has bricked it. Oh no, we're gonna have to do a hard style. <sighs> uh, what, you've got a song on there now? Uh, I do have a smart media card, but it, it is actually from a vintage mp3 player So I don't want to wipe anything off of it. Oh, look at the internals It's just a raw PCB board and you've got to find where it slots in where you don't destroy your card. Oh, oh, oh error scan Car, okay. oh. <laughs> I'm comatroning as hard as I can guys. Oh, no, I have to format the card to do anything with it and, and I'm not doing that because I don't want to lose the music that's on here. It's like a time capsule and I don't want to spoil it. N not for the Comatron. I mean, but these issues are normal, like trying to get these old MP3 players to work. They are very, very fussy, but the, the buds can still save it. I'm not going to blow them up. I just want to have a smell. Look, they're trying to be clever where well, they have a long one and a short one. Goody. Oh, they fit great. Um, they're, they're all right. In a pinch, I'd go, well... I can listen to something. There's some bass, there's some top end, it's got a stereo vibe to it. Considering how old and hopeless this thing is, I mean, that's easily the best part about it. And that shows you how terrible this thing is. I know you're all keen for bloodlust. Oh, my puck cells. Speaking of which, I gotta save my boys. Yep. You're safe. For now. These are the, what were they called? The Lafonies from a few weeks ago? All right, let's take our hate out on this. The Lafonis live another day. We'll kill them one day. They are getting slightly crunchy with every try. <laughs> Gotta put them away carefully. See you soon. Oh, my puck so. Well, another reminder on why the iPod kind of just took off, you know? Uh, yeah, the iPod wasn't cheap, but it didn't suck. I mean, like, this wasn't that cheap either. And it's just this you know, lightweight, do-nothing guy. And it was brand new sealed. I'm the original owner. Well, the headphones were tolerable. But anyways, thanks so much for supporting me. I really appreciate you. I'll see you on the... What does M mean? Why do I only have one of them? I can't thank you enough, and I can't sell the gravity of my thank yous without giving you the full backstory to this stupid hot mess. You guys saved me from certain oblivion, but I'm treating this like a wedding, right? Normally you have the ceremony, and then the party. Well, next week could be the ceremony, man. I want to party today. And you know, you know how I like to party, mate. We're going to, we're going to cashews, mate. Ugh. Oh.
Cashies, the air-conditioned beauty that can present items of your deepest desire. Providing what you're after can actually be found at a Cashies, I don't know if they sell true love, but I've been surprised before. And the best gift sometimes are the gifts you get yourself. Wait, where else am I gonna find the best of Bing Alba? Bing, don't look at me with those dreamy eyes. I've warned you about that. Xmas is coming up, and I know some that will ruin any occasion. Don't get lessons, just start strumming. Oh my gosh, mate, I'll get take home the crown and Andrews. Super cricket. The boys are loving it, and like, she's looking at it like, mate. I stopped playing Candy Crush for this. Oh, jeez, mate, I'd love to be as cool as this guy, oh, jeez. Someone handed in their beans. No more beans for that person. Some didn't want their ominous Bosch cubes either. We quite gone, mate, you alright? Oh, you're not looking too hot? No, no way, Obi-Wan, mate, you alright, mate? Oof, you're looking worse than Qui-Gon, eh? The spinning wheel is still here. Someone come and get it before it sits for another four months. Nothing says true love like a divorce fund. F in the chat for everyone who's lost a sub for this week. They had golf clubs you might actually want to buy and use. I couldn't believe it. But old mate still standing by. See you in three months. They even had a fencing set. I was tempted with the fencing set. But don't miss out on the world's least efficient washing machine. It's only been kicked really hard once. So get in quick before someone kicks it again. A Zilbel! I don't care if this is a knockoff one or nothing. That's going to be really annoying in my drum streams and I must have it. Same with this $50 snare drum. I'm never going to change those heads, mate. I'm going to play it as is. And mate, Cashies is all over them retro games. And it makes me so happy. Like, legit. Great prices on replacement cables and controllers, like, and you don't have to order online and have it destroyed by a courier. Like, you could walk in on a Sunday and get replacement vintage video game stuff. More beans, guys. Oh, mate. Well, maybe as a present to myself, mate, I need to come and grab easily the worst-looking knockoff BMW wheels I've ever seen. <sighs> they fooled me. A singer sewing machine! I like the- Oh, quick! Quick, we need to get the spinning wheel here! But, ah! Uh, a spooky laptop! Ooh! It chills my bones and soul. Quick, bring the singer back! Oh, it oh, calms me down. What is this? A lute? Is that what this is? What's behind a flute? Conquer the world with your knowledgeable foundations in science and astronomy. Or try and get rich finding buried pirate treasure. I love the look on this guy. He's all, damn it, mate. I didn't find pirate treasure. I'll have to go back to work tomorrow after all. And beards and masks don't mix. Oof, what an adventure I had. And I haven't even shown you the stuff that I've bought. But I need to introduce a classic character. Power on. Ooh. Bluetooth mode. Oh, what a sexy voice. Device paired. What are you paired to? I didn't sanction that. This is not a good day to be disobedient. Let me just tell you that, right? This is an EFM Toledo. It's a perfectly cromulent little speaker guy. I've done a waterproof speaker video and uh, this is okay. It's not bad, but it's not like great. But then looking amongst the horde of stuff, what did I see? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I don't even care if it's got the same voice or not. It's the fact that this is another EFM Toledo. All right, here we go. I haven't tried and charge this and I haven't heard it yet. Power on. <gasps> Bluetooth. <laughs> Yes! I'm gonna have to leave this sticker on so I know which one's which. I gotta know who's the OG. iPods are so hard to find. Even chatting with the staff, th they just don't turn up anymore. They've just hit that point where they're just, they're quite collectible and or useless. <laughs> but I found a pair of boys at the same cashies and I had to rescue them. 29 bucks, not bad. 149 too much. But I mean, some idiot had to make these expensive and collectible all of a sudden. I wonder who that idiot was. But I don't mind because this is an iPod video. Like, I love these. Problem is, you never know if the batteries are absolutely cack on these. I just hope they're not wiped. That's all. Good. Good start. Please don't be wiped. Don't you dare be wiped. It's not wiped! Okay, this is fun now. It's got videos on it. And the boys. Yeah! That's fun! I mean, obviously I can't play in the audio because I'm going to get done. Ooh, she's low on bats. Movies? Oh, Better have a funny name. Carly's Ipo! Oh, and I love it. And it's a 30 gig model. That's so cool and wholesome and I shouldn't drop them like that because it kills the hard drives. Any playlists? There are! Do they use on the go? They used on the go! Carly! You're the first one! <laughs> we gotta plug it into the iMac so we can giggle at more details. Come on, give us Carly's iPod. 
There it is, the iCarly. All right, we're gonna see what's the what's the most plays. 72 plays of only one John Butler trio. 100 plays of losing weight through what? I, I, I have to talk over this because I'm sure it's content match in some way. It's losing weight through hypnosis. I'm unchonking as we speak. I can feel it. Those donuts aren't appealing Hello, to me. What? On. Okay. All right. I gotta I'm stop now. I'm gonna get content matched. I yeah. The top play goes to morning and even meditation. That's that's righteous. That was fun and I enjoyed every single bit. Cheers, Kylie. All right. We're gonna try the touch lead. Please have funny apps on it. That's all I want. Oh my gosh. This is gonna take forever, isn't it? All right, well, you sit over here then. So I was into my second cashies, mate, and right. Oh my goodness, there's another one. <laughs> is this the male version? Are we gonna have a breeding pair of these? Uh, prices kind of fluctuate. This is more about what I would pay for a second and one of these. It even came with a cablet. Oh! Ow! Ow! Oh, what has this been dipped in? Oh, it's like rust water in there. Oh no. <sighs> oh, I'm learning why this is cheap. Power on. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, the, the OG sexy speaker is just getting less and less valuable. Wow, the only problem is the battery's cooked. Even on the charge, it powered off. So, I'm going to have to transfer you to the big bet. Because you ain't doing the do for me. Come on. <laughs> Don't tell me you don't work for 29 bucks. Mm, see you in a minute. An actual gift to myself. I saw first two seasons of The Simpsons on DVD and like three bucks each, right? And it's in better quality than the one that's on Disney Plus because the worst looking versions of The Simpsons are on Disney Plus. Oh, big companies, you wonder why we all hate you so much. Even the VHS copy is better than Disney Plus for sure. <gasps> Over to you. Yeah. You got it, mate. Hello? Oh, it's been wiped. Oh, well. Well, it goes in the pile of the other three billion of these I have because they're, they're kind of useless. They just sit in no man's land. No mods, out of date software. What do you do? So. I went to like three different cashies, and again, mate, just glancing through the cupboards, having a look at the hoard, and f oh my god, man, they were everywhere! Every cashies had one! <laughs> and he's priced all over the place! I mean, is there schmutz all in the. It's schmutz free? Well, it turns straight on. Power on. Bluetooth mode. So, uh, sexy speaker. You were having a bit of a tantrum earlier, you know, asking for a raise, wanting more influence on the channel. Well, uh, I'm kind of figuring out that I can find you just about anywhere, mate. Power off. Amazing. So, I bought this. <laughs> the Zilbel. I think it's a fake Zilbel. I mean, this is a drum thing. I used to be a professional drummer for a living, and I've never wanted one of these because, you know, they're not really palatable for me. And this one's taken a wallop. And this morning was one of my drum streams, and you betcha I had to put this on and take a listen. All right, just, just to dazzle you with something and make most people leave. I don't know how you dent one of these. This is like the thickest thing you can get. Oh gosh, no! Ah! Oh, it's worse than I thought. It's okay, I did pick something else up from Cashies. Ah! Microphones love it when that happens. I've spilled my brown. I don't know if you can read the price tag. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's nice. I'm gonna leave the sticker on it, and I haven't touched the tuning. Oh, it just goes, bonk. I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the wires. I'm trying to hear why it doesn't sound like a drum. Oh, I got it. The wires were too tight. Since it is a guest, and if it's not a good guest, well, it gets the same treatment, right? This is a beginner snare that I pimped out. It's wrapped in an old t-shirt and some cheap gold hoops.
You don't need to spend a lot of money. <laughs> I can't wait to bring it back another day to throw it at the door again. It's, it's, just, it's just how it is. Heads up, Cashy Snay. Here it comes. <laughs> Oof. That was uncalled for. Horrible. Simply horrible. And same with that snare drum. But boy, was it fun to chuck at the door. And look, I know you're all savages for destruction. There's there's a few sexy speakers in the ranks now. <laughs> Two perfectly cromulent ones. The tantrum-inducing OG one, you're on thin ice, mate. And um, the filthy, awful grot one, which um, is pretty cooked even when it's on the charge. Mate. Power on. Yeah. Oops, battery low. No, you're on charge. Power no! Stay on! Power off. Oh my goodness. What's in you? Oh wow, this just comes straight off. Oh! Wow, it's a lot more simpler than I thought. Oh no! Wow, the just the bare bones of this. <laughs> oh my pox cells. What makes a sexy speaker, huh? Show me your secrets. Where they put the sassiness. Yeah! Oh, I mean, it's nice to see that it's not dodgy on the inside of this. And these are just little reverberating whatevers. Which is a real speaker thing. Like, they, they're not fakes, they actually do something. But yeah, no, I'm not gonna destroy it anymore. I'm just gonna put this aside somewhere. Oh, I got no plans. Settle. Well, that's it. Huge thanks for everyone for jumping in. I'm nothing without yous. You really have changed my life and my family's life. I'm gonna rabble about it all next week. Humongous thanks to my patrons, especially Stinky Names right here because my $1 a month, I do extra videos. This whole thing's powered by them. I can turn off mid-roll ads. I can do things the way I want. And you probably noticed that I didn't actually play a song with this. All with that horrible snare drum. So this week's after show is private concert. I'm gonna play you a tune and it's gonna feature this guy and the other one and we're more likely gonna throw them at the door again. <laughs> so you guys are everything to me. Thanks so much, mate and all. See you all next time. Frank's seen something that I'm not seeing, but apparently this wood is really interesting. She's been staring at it for at least five minutes now, staring at this wood. Let's just, let's just pan out here. Five minutes, Frank. Five minutes. Nothing. Look, she's gone, man. Hey, it's the after show. Hey, thanks so much for supporting me. Frank's moving! She didn't move the whole stream. Frank, why do you do this off camera? I don't get it. Frank, don't lick the walls. Frank, don't lick the walls. Frank, Frank, stop it. Enhance on the Frank. There she is. That's what Frank does all day, everyone. Yes, Frank Cam's live. And no, I didn't play a song with the snare drum or this hateful bell thing. It's not a real Zill Bell. It's a knockoff one. But it still sounds horrible. And that's why it's funny. So I'm going to play a version of a song by Franzoli Electronics. Oh, I've got to double check that. Franzoli Electronics. I've actually asked permission to use them in my drum streams because they're the best versions to not get content match, but still play fun, recognizable songs. Look at Frank looking out the window, yearning for something more. Which is a lie, I don't think she even knows who she is. Alright, this is a Tesla coil version of this banger, mate. A classic on the drum stream, featuring the Cashy Snare. What is that? And... Oh, that's awful through the inners. They're getting thrown at the door, I'm telling you. What, see you, Frank? I finally start playing, and Frank's about to leg it. I'm keeping an eye on you.
Awful. Awful thing. I mean, like, <laughs> a ride symbol. This thing. Oh, man. Well, it's been fun, Cassie's drum. And you too. Oh my gosh, real instruments. And this is a beginner snare as well. You know how bad that... Get a crud up you. So, humongous thanks for the support. You guys let me do this the way I want to do it. I mean, and this is why I've got the warehouse. So I can do these drum strings and make this kind of noise. And like, every, it's all cool. That's the point. And it's, it's all thanks to you guys. I can only afford to do this from you. You know, get rid of all the crappy YouTube ads. Do it people powered. And so that's it. And Frank, see you out. Frank. Yeah. Holy dingus. Other than a huge thank you. I, I don't know what else to say. I, what do you do while people sing happy birthday to you? No, look, seriously, thank you so much. To understand the gravity of my thanks, I'm giving you the full backstory, right? And it's going to be like a... Big ol- <laughs> I swear this is gonna turn into a ramble. I've written this out, but I'm doomed. Because the circumstances on how I got here doing this, they don't make any sense to me. Well, I'm a drummer. Like, drums absolutely took over my life as soon as I started playing since, like, the age of nine or something. I grew up in a proper podunk country town. Like, the nearest McDonald's was 40 minutes away via highway speed, no barriers, winding country roads, take me home, full of kangaroos to hit from 6pm onwards. It's where my love of cars was born, though, because you bet I did that drive for some nuggets, mate. I mixed concrete as a kid for pocket money. You know, as a lot of country kids do. <laughs> I had a forklift and a bobcat license as a teenager. And mate, I knew how to dig holes and weld steel. Where do you think I get this Aussie droll from, mate? People complain about how messed up my hands are, so well, what do you expect? <laughs> when Smoko anyway. But as a kid, there wasn't much in the way of music tuition, except for my local drum teacher. You know, I'm up in podunk nowhere. When I was 16, I was driving 45 minutes one way to the nearest school that offered it so I could actually play in bands. During this time, my iPod was my sidekick. This is the first one I grabbed out of the pile. I, sh I should, it's, look, it's HP. My band rehearsal music was on there. My music exam pieces to play along to were on there. And it never let me down. Never. We made a tight team, my iPod and me. From school, went to TAFE to get my diploma in music. I got a perfect score at my third year recital and the lecturers begged me to then go to university. I didn't really want it. And I auditioned for the jazz degree, which is, you know, jazz is the ground floor of all pop music. I got in! But the hour and 15 drive into the center of Adelaide wasn't something I could do daily anymore. Uh, it was time to move out. Grabbed my meager belongings, it was called my iPod and phone, and headed to the city to live in a three bedroom house with five people living in it. Mmm, uni share houses. But like, here's the thing guys, I'm a podunk country kid. I'd never taken a bus before. I, I'm 21 and just literally lost in the city. We didn't have buses that was called get a lift or drive yourself, take a cow. So I was in real deep at this point, like fully committed to this crazy career choice of just being a musician. I wanted to be the guy that you call for anything, any genre, any sort of gig, any time frame. Like hired gun of sorts. You know, I was pretty brainwashed for it, so you know, I was practicing until one in the morning, taking every rehearsal offer I could to just get known in Adelaide's music scene. And that's when I lost my dad to illness. Kinda went numb, I suppose. I was already so overexposed to the high stress life of uni, cause yeah, it's hard. I mean, half the class quits in the first year sometimes. I promised dad I was gonna smash it, and I Smashed it! I scored the Jazz Award twice, which is given to the student with the highest marks. Uh, in my final year, I was gigging with the professors themselves. I was booked for studio work, I did full-size stadium gigs, I, I've done touring, orchestra pit work. <laughs> uh, I even did some mascot work for Port Power Footy Club. <laughs> Tim!
and then straight out of uni there were schools lined up for me to become their drum teacher and I had like 90 students straight away. It was all working out really good during Adelaide Fringe season my calendar would explode with like international touring acts that needed a guy to do a single rehearsal and then hit the big paid show that night. That was me, baby. This is my dream. A lot of front bar and pub gigs that we did, we didn't even have set lists because this is what we've committed our lives to. We could happily segue from Metallica's Nothing Else Matters straight into Kylie Minogue's The Locomotion with no words spoken or even plans to do so. So much fun. But a few years gigging and teaching, I learned just how hard it is to get paid as a musician. Not finding work, I could find gigs all the time. It was doing the work, but then getting the money you were promised. We were all self-employed. We would work at school, but as a contractor, oh, 90 students, hey? Well, that's 90 pairs of parents you need to make invoices for, and worse, chase money out of. A third of them would dog you every school term. You know, you have to constantly check your bank to make sure it hasn't arrived, so you're not pestering after they've paid. Or maybe they didn't add my invoice number or their kid's name. So many would literally just send unnamed money to me and expect it all to work out. Even Adelaide Casino owed me money. It takes over a month to get paid for one of their gigs. Like, guys, I saw you empty those pokey machines. I, I'm pretty sure you got that 200 bucks for that awful 1am gig I did. At this point, I was working upwards of 18 hour days, and I mean it. Getting up at 6 to teach all morning, and then rehearsing in the evenings with our original bands that we would, oh, we would hope would take off. But then the weekends were full of regular work gigs, like weddings, functions, front bar stuff. And yet, I didn't have any money in my pockets. All my spare time was chasing tiny payments that I was owed. I lived in the cheapest house I could find. Still to this day, it's the cheapest house. I made it feel like home, but it wasn't nice. It had no insulation in the roof. It would boil in the summer and freeze in the winter. Drafts all through the building. So the electricity bill was humongous, just trying to stay barely comfortable. It's like 2016 now, I'm two years out of uni. During this time, I'd gotten the courage to write my own music. Music. And you know me, I always have to make it stupid. So I was remixing The Simpsons with GarageBand and iMovie on my iPad. I never cross promote my channels, really. I mean, because I'd rather people find it because it's what they were looking for. And I'm going to tell you that channel because it's real important to the story. The channel is called Dankness, and it's my first ever go at writing music. As a drummer, we are notoriously bad at it. I got some tracks I'm real proud of, uh, and uh, there's a lot of stinkers. <laughs> But that's the ratio, welcome to it. But Dank must spawn this amazing underground community. It's weird and fun for us hardcore Simpsons fans. All my music mates are big nerds of the show like me, so we always joked about how quotes could turn into tracks. So when students didn't show up to their lessons, I always had my MacBook there to work on a track, and it's how I got them done. Spare hour at a gig? Well, I'll do some more work on the bridge of blurst of times. Hello Mr. Thompson was written in a rural hotel room when I was touring with a Scottish duo true story. The tiny little YouTube payments coming in was a humongous help. I was living real cheap anyways, I just wanted reliability. <laughs> and you know, due to folks not paying me, quite often I was putting fuel in my car with a credit card, which is, mate, just digging a hole, you know. Credit cards are financial shovels. Then Dankmas got demonetized with no way to contest it, Google, thank you. And then during this time, my granddad passed away. But amazingly, he left us all some money. Like a few thousand bucks. I'd never seen that before. I didn't want to waste it. I put it all into a PC to practice video editing with. Making videos is always something I've loved to do and somehow it felt like an investment of the money. But the battle to get paid was lost when I finally defaulted on my Spotify payment in 2019. I didn't even have 15 bucks. I'd worked so hard that year that I actually had my first proper meltdown. I'm. I'm totally comfortable in sharing that because right, I was getting up at 6 to be in the car by 6 30 to drive to the other side of town because that's where the teaching work was and I was living where I could afford I'd teach until 3 p.m leg it to a rehearsal at 5 have something resembling dinner while putting on a motorbike helmet to ride into the city to sit in an orchestra pit for two week long running show there were no parks for kilometers the bike was the only way the show would finish at 11 p.m it's a Tuesday because it was every night for two weeks motorbike ride through the city in rain to be home before midnight. I can't get to sleep straight away. I just ran out of an orchestra pit. <laughs> so honestly, it's more like 2 a.m. now and I gotta get up at six in the morning to do it again. 
for two weeks solid. I got nine days in before I woke up to my alarm and I just laid there. 10 a.m., Just I just stared at my phone and watched it ring. It all just felt so pointless. You know, that two-week show only paid 300 bucks in total. And there were three months worth of rehearsals. <laughs> I wasn't up for teaching that day. I pull up in my $500 Honda to these private Catholic schools where I see my student hop out of a Porsche Cayenne and the mum leans out the driver's window and goes, oh, we're a bit tight on money this week. Can we give you the 60 bucks next week? And I'm being serious. I wish I was joking. Thankfully, the school was really supportive and like they even helped me chase a few folks down for me because, you know, I loved my students. I've watched them grow up. I've been teaching for years at this point. Like, 13-year-olds were now 18-year-olds. But Dankless was on Spotify by this point. I had a few hundred patrons pitching in. And after Google finally remonetized the channel after two years, it was enough to help out. Um, it's why I turn off ads here and go full-time on Patreon, guys. Like, Google stinks and I got history with them. I was still in that dump hole house, keeping my expenses way low. And gigs were actually picking up now. And I figured out who were the land gigs that wouldn't pay and who the awesome professionals were where it was actually enjoyable to go to work. But if my life hadn't been on the seat of my pants already, I took another huge jump. 2019, I decided to quit teaching. I didn't take that decision lightly, as for most of us musicians, teaching was the most stable employment. I pondered the whole year about it. It was also super sad. I was proper mates with these kids. I'd known them for years. I broke it to them with a whole term left in the year so we could at least hang out proper and we had heaps of time to say goodbye. You betcha I cried a few times. It was a real shock to some of the kids. But hey, a lot of them have been watching this channel this whole time, eh? So, hey Liam. But I did it to focus on my passion of gigging, playing the drums, and to have a go at this tiny YouTube channel that was going. I had gig bookings for over the next year and a half in advance at the moment. I literally could just get by on that money alone. Thanks to low expense Spencers and my amazing Dankmas supporters and Spotify listens on top of it. I was going to be okay. It was scary, but I'm that's jumping for a dream here. Let's go. So long as nothing in the world changes. Nothing. If everything stays the same, I'll just get by. COVID. What's a gig? Packed venues? You know the story. And us musicians just got cleaned out. Teaching gigs in school still went on. You know, like Zoom lessons, Skype, you know. Uh, but I'd quit all that. <laughs> well, uh, there was something else I was doing. Hey, look, all right, we've got to rewind. I told you this was a big ramble. Right, rewind. <laughs> so back in 2019, when I ran out of money, you know, no Spotify. And that's when I reached into the drawer and grabbed my iPod again. And naturally, you know, the battery was flat. <laughs> no worries, I've been fixing my own iPod since. I was 14. The first thing I ever fixed on my own was an iPod mini. I got it for 50 bucks off an old bank with a bad battery. I knew you could flash mod these to replace the drives, but it wasn't really for extra capacity. I mean, it was more for liability and a cheap way to fix them because these drives are expensive. I needed some spare parts, so I went looking on eBay. And that's when I saw that iPods were worth nothing. Bulk lots of 50 for like a hundred bucks. And yet a working one of these with a new battery, a nice clean case sold, for 50. So for some pocket money to get by, I was fixing and selling these for a little bit. That's actually where this iPad comes in. This is my fourth gen iPad that I used at university. I did so many gigs with this thing. All my study, the battery is actually still good. It's heat's funny. It totally works. Uh, when I upgraded, their mum had it for ages until it was too slow to run Facebook. Then it became the kitchen PDF cookbook reader. And then it sat in the drawer drenched in oil vapors. It really was doomed for the bin, but I was nostalgic for it. I cleaned it up and even tried to give it to one of my music mates. No one wanted it, guys. No one. But I love the color. I mean, I bought it after all. But it's a nice soft surface for working on iPods with. These things are so slippery. And this little grippy table, it's a lot like um, the leather tables that jewelers used to work on. That's where it got the inspiration. And it's why it's here. It's always been here on this desk, which I've had since university days. This is case number two. You bet you still got the OG. Many a grit was had. The one grit, it's a sandpaper joke. The higher the number, the finer the particles. Right, 2,000 grit. Right? Well, then 60 grit. Well, one grit. It's a single grit. But I'd prepared my iPod selling magnum opus. I'd been keeping the iPod sales money separate to invest in four busted iPod videos and four 256 gigabyte cards with adapters and batteries and whatever. 256 gig cards were super expensive literally a couple years ago. So the trick really was finding the cheapest iPods and hopefully make them like new again to turn a profit. But I knew the profit was going to be huge. It was going to be totally worth it. Nearly no one was selling 
256 gig iPods. So I had all the cards and adapters. I think I found about two of the iPod videos I needed and that's when an old mate of mine, Nick, came around. Saxophonist and great music producer. Years ago, he gifted me these K612s for my birthday and it's where I got the bug bite for headphones. Great hands. I showed him what I was up to and he went, Oh, that's neat. You should make a channel about this. Huh. I'd never even thought about it. And here's the thing. He mentioned it because Dank Pods is my fifth go at a YouTube channel. I tried to do a drumming along to video game thing back in 2009, fills it out during uni. Years later, Dankmas started, which I still want to make stuff for. Fun fact, I launched it on Vidme first because we all knew YouTube be the stink. Then I made a side channel as a random vlog style thing, but really I was just using it as practice for video editing. I tried another drumming channel thing, but like hints and tips based, but I ran out of video ideas. Other than doing just basic lessons, which I really didn't want to do. Which by the third video, I was like, oh, I'm all out of ideas. <laughs> So I didn't want to make those mistakes again. I've been demonetized by YouTube for two years, right, on Dankmas. So I made sure any music that I use was free to use from the YouTube audio library. And look, if you want to be a YouTuber for a living, you have to have enough work to do. Not run out of video ideas at number three. One video a week is 52 videos a year. Do you have 52 video ideas? Now imagine the channels who've been doing it for 10 years. It gets harder as you go. So I wrote a list of videos I wanted to do, some out of my budget, but as a, hey, maybe things work out sort of thing. When I hit 70, I knew it was time to give it a shot. The channel name, right? well, I dank miss, right? I dank music. I'm a loose goose, so dank pods. A lot of channels find their style over time, but I really did want to see on my fifth go if I could just boink into existence <laughs> with a music format, you know, it's all mostly figured out from day one. I sat and thought about it for three months, thinking about how I wanted to do it. I, you know, I wanted it to be a weekly show. Dankmas was like once a month or six weeks. So it had to be just easy to set up and go. I mostly ad lib because I'm a jazz guy and that's how we do it. And also it's more fun to not have to write scripts. Yeah, you know, it saves heaps of time. Uh, for reviews, I have dot points I read off, but very rarely I'll script it all out. This is all scripted out. You listen to me read a script. So we're in 2019, remember, and it's term three school holidays. And I'd finally decided that I was going to quit teaching and I was going to let them know when school went back. And I knew I'd have some extra time to work on stuff if I wasn't hustling as a teacher. So a second channel would fit into my week. And it was during those two weeks off from school that I filmed three episodes. First one is on a GoPro, which wasn't great. And the audio went nuts, whatever. And each one since has been on my iPhone. It's the best camera I had and it films in 4K60. It's still an iPhone, by the way. Oh, remember that PC I built thanks to my amazing granddad on a whim that I'd need it? Well, while none of those other channels went anywhere, it was awesome practice, not just editing, but working as a producer in terms of timing and pacing videos. I had the PC rig ready to go, and I knew once I started uploading the videos, I had to keep them coming no matter what. But it was my third upload that launched this stupid thing the one terabyte iPod. And here's the thing, those four 256 gigabyte cards were the ones that I'd bought to sell. The quad board was from my personal iPod that I borrowed out of it. And my plan was then to take all the cards out and then make and sell the iPods. But then that video took off so quick, I never had a chance to find the last two iPods and I never sold the cards. This is one of the iPods with the 256 card in it and this I use in my drum streams. Another one's in a GoPro, I think another one's in a Switch, I think an old mate has another one. So this is still a tiny channel at this stage with like a single hit to its name, but hey, I had a list. I was just going down the list, hitting them one after the other to keep up the momentum. And remember, we were in lockdowns at this point, so all I had was time. I'd always wanted to get into headphones since day one, and I only ever got the try audio file sets while I was in studios doing music work. Nick's house let me sit in on mastering. I don't do sponsor stuff, but when COVID hit and I lost all my gigs, I actually did two of them and I hated it. The agency in between is super pushy and have to review your video as well. No thanks. But the money from those two ads I used to buy all the headphones to get me started. You know, the MBR 7506s, mate, the Herdo 600s, they were second hand. That's how I afforded the T1s and the Orderseys. So I could finally hear those top end headphones. And it was 2020 lockdowns. And so I just sat inside and read headphone forums and listened to music. That's why I never claimed to be an expert. I mean, in a lot of ways, I I'm still new myself. Since then, this channel has exploded. I mean, Dankmas is six years old and it made it to 100K subs only a few months ago, which is so rad for such a dumb, fun project. Gotta get on the Google for my plaque. But at just over two years to hit a million and I've got this amazing group of people chasing me the whole way, it is nuts. Guys, I was on course for oblivion. 
I quit my job to chase a dream on foundations that the world wouldn't change right before a world pandemic. I was doomed to jump and hit the ground a thousand feet down. This channel saved me. I was already rough in it, and that was gonna be, oh man. And look, I've never had such a sense of purpose before. For years I felt lost. It felt so pointless. It, the harder I tried, the more tired I got. You know, the situation wouldn't change. It wasn't rewarding. But this channel hasn't just changed my life. So this thing has exploded and now I'm getting paid in several currencies across multiple platforms and payment systems. I need help with the bookkeeping end. You can get into a lot of trouble with taxes. And now I actually needed an employee for my one man video production business. So I found someone who's working for a big building developer here in Adelaide. Like proper city gig, like business management, you name it. But because of COVID, no work sites were running. And after a year of lockdowns, now the desk jobs were getting squeezed. The ground crews were let go 10 months prior. The bosses and higher ups were literally just casually chatting about, oh yeah, maybe we'll just cut her hours and whatnot. I made her an offer to work for me and she said yes. I hired my mum. She's still at my childhood home and was driving all the way to the city and back and had done for over 10 years. Like to get that phone call from mum and where she just says, you know, oh, it's okay. I'll work it out. You know, the, that real adult phone call. I'm so glad to free her from that humongous drive and that lame business, you know, casually talking about cutting her hours and asking her to order huge crates of wine for a sponsor. And you wonder why I hate big businesses. She's now turned my bedroom into a proper office for my operations. And with her help, I've consulted with experts and now I'm a registered Australian business. I've hired a proper firm to help me manage my finances properly because it's so complicated how to put away from my future and the best way to save up for my goals. Like, I want to talk about money now because this whole thing is people powered and I want to do this transparently. You know, I did those two sponsor spots at the start of COVID and I hated it. And during the ad, everyone leaves. So no one stays for the Frank bit at the end. And I'm sick of ads, man. I'm so sick of it. You know, thanks to all my patrons, I can turn off the mid-roll ads, which are always so loud and annoying and they ruin my videos. Some people might leave the video because they don't want to sit through another ad. There are ads at the start because Google puts them there even if the channel isn't eligible for the partner program. So if they're going to be there anyway, they better dip into the dank fund, mate. And finally, the less ads I show, the less they earn off me, so... <laughs> Google sometimes begs me to put more ads in. I love it. But I, I've come from nothing. I'm from the dirt. And I get self-conscious about my earnings. But you look at the Patreon number. Do the math at $1 each. The names at the end of the videos are the insane $10 people. It's all I can offer you is to put your name up there. But $1 really is all I want. I'd rather folks pitch in a pinky finger than putting their full back and legs into it. Do put in the effort to make the extra videos just for them. But I've never seen an income like this. Although keep in mind, I don't get all of that, right? You know, there's something called taxes and they take heaps. But it's still an insane income for me. And I want to show you what I'm doing with it and what I've got planned and, and what I dream and hope happens. Let's go on a tour. Whoa! <laughs> yep. Uh, forgive any noises, you know, like we are in an industrial area. This is at the warehouse, right? And there's planes. Ugh, the planes will get there. Look, it's the hot, smelly rig you've been watching this whole time. Yep. Look at this sophisticated camera arrangement, mate. That's a tripod jammed in between an iMac and an IKEA table. But I want to show the rest of the room because uh, it's my drum cave. This is my drum kit from university days. It's from the the 60s, I refinished myself over a weekend while in university. You guys have afforded me something special, which is opportunity, right? At the start of this year, I'd spare money to invest. I, I invested in Dogecoin. I invested in Dogecoin. <laughs> and I used the money to buy all these vintage symbols that I've dreamed of. Like that's from the 40s. Oh, this is like Tony Williams is right. Oh, it's a K. That's from the 30s. Oh, I got the matching snare drum for my favorite drums. Like, oh, I I never owned that. And I've been able to pick up some of my hero snare drums, like, cause I want to keep these forever. One of my drum students who's all grown up and has a studio session is borrowing one of these this weekend. These are my symbols from back in the day. I got this one with my Jazz Award money and this is the first symbol I ever bought new and they're still hanging out here. And that's the stream rig for you guys that watch it. Yes, guys. It's the crutch. This is actually why I've got the warehouse, so I can do drum streams. So every, everything I've explained, you see, drums are my life and my everything. And to have a rig like this 
is a dream come true. And I've set this up to prove a point. These, these are beginner drums, these are pearl exports. I've been using these since 2016 and I mean it, that I love them. That's a beginner crash that has cracks in it. I got for 10 bucks off of me. Uh, I cracked that myself and fixed it poorly. And this one's all bent out of shape with massive holes drilled in it. You don't need perfect symbols to sound great. Um, I also invested in sheep coin early as well. <laughs> And you bet you I've cashed that out. Basically, I'd love to do drum history videos. The drum kit is nuts. It's one of the newest instruments in music. All right, this is a drum kit that we know and love. Yo, this is how they used to look. And I'm a huge Pearl and Zildjian guy. Like, I don't do sponsored stuff or anything, but I would love to be endorsed. I, I really would. <laughs> I've even bought their embarrassing symbols that no one bought. I'm being serious. I'm, I want to do drum history, and you betcha I've got the flops. No one wanted silver symbols. And now with the Sheep coin money, I'm trying to collect symbols from all the decades because they're all crazy. They're all so different. Look what they did in the 80s, guys. <laughs> Let's step out into the warehouse. So I'm actually gonna show you some stuff that people haven't seen yet at all. First being my ute. In 2019, my car exploded. Like just to add to that sucky year of no money and proper mentor at university and now a, a real old mate of mine. This was his and he just let me take it and said, pay me back whenever, even if it's in 10 years. And my first Google Pay, the first thing I did was pay him off for this. I love this car, mate, eh? Back when Aussies made things. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you what's beyond this wall. No one has seen this yet. Not even my garbage time people. Yes, I have another channel called Garbage Time. It's more of my vlog styled thing. But you're the first to see it, eh? Behold, the dank fleet. All of these have stories. Uh, 2013, doing an emergency filling gig for somebody, amazing bazooki player. The gig went really well. Afterwards, he was loading up into this and I said, mate, if you ever want to sell it, let me know. He smirked and said, no way, never. I'll never sell it. A couple years ago, he rings me and goes, Wade, I need to sell the wagon, 500 bucks. But for you, $300. <laughs> My $300 Mercedes. It only blows smoke all of the time. It, it needs work. <laughs> get to you. It's the little red idiot, which I'm very tempted to call Tiny Tony. That oil leaks from the Honda. Uh. If you want to see this thing getting worked on, head over to Garbage Time. That's where this guy originates from. An all made of my James found it for two grand. That is a bargain for one of these. They are so funny. Go watch the vid. This one is a fully road legal, state inspected electric car. Look at the battery packs. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> <laughs> I picked up this one recently and I had to have it because it's an electric nugget. I love nuggets. So this one, this is the most expensive one in the fleet. My dad's the reason why I'm into cars and he had an old V8 Commodore and I fell in love with it. And I wanted an old V8 sedan. I got this for 6,000 and I just love big sedans. The suspension's gone, the exhaust is gone. It needs a service and everything, but it does drive and run. Electric seats, electric rear seats. <laughs> it's the long wheel base one, automatic aircon, and it's built like a tank. This is actually the car that I'd love to be daily driving. All right, now it's time to talk about this guy. That's the parts Honda, don't worry about that one. Uh, this belonged to a mate of mine. It used to be mint, such a beautiful little bike. It was stolen as part of a big motorbike stealing gang. They scratched a dragon into it, put this Guns N' Roses guy on it, and just thrashed it, the poor old girl. I'm warm to these because my mentor and friend who let me get that U, he loaned me a thousand bucks to get a broken one of these which I fixed and sold to get this which I fixed and sold to get a Harley which was an absolute bag of bolts which I fixed and sold to get this and then wiped off of it by a red light runner on her phone use the insurance money to rebuild the engine and paint it myself with spray paint cans I'm being serious that spray paint which I then sold for this which I then sold for this. My mate let me have this for 200 bucks. I'm gonna turn into a chopper on garbage time. And there is one car missing, which is my $500 Honda. It's at home. I cycled here today. I'm still using that car. It is the most reliable thing I own. Cause the Falcon's got weird LPG issues. Durg make me mad. So I'm still driving my $500 Honda. And if you're wondering like, well, why don't you treat yourself to a new vehicle so you got something reliable? I mean, you know, blow smoke, not road legal, probably was never legal and the battery packs are bad. If I was gonna get a brand new vehicle, you know, I love my old nuggets. If it has four wheels and runs, I'm happy. But on the motorbike, like that black one had done 300,000 kilometers. It would snap engine mount bolts, all the rubbles were gone. None of the gauges worked when I got it. You know, and the older I get, the more I realize how dangerous motorbike riding is. And so yes, 
I did buy a new vehicle. It's a motorbike. And I, if it was going to be my first ever vehicle, it, I wanted it to be something I could keep forever and always say it's my first. Ah, oh, I got this. Ignore the boxes. <laughs> If you're wondering how busy I am, and every one of those boxes was put through the Honda. Yeah, it's a road glide. You've never heard me talk about it because um, I hate it. <laughs> the hydraulic clutch is awful. It's all over the place and it's dangerous. But I want it for the GPS. I was using my motorbike for regular errands, right? That's what I love doing with them. That's why I love baggers. Like, do fruit and veg shopping with it. That clutch is way too dangerous. And Apple's CarPlay doesn't work unless you buy their headset and keep it charged and then just throw it. It, it made me so mad. It doesn't sound that great. It doesn't run that good. And Harley were wondering why their sales were down. I even pimped it out. No chrome. I went for the gold and brass look. It, it's, it's my dream bike. It's just the most amazing looking thing ever. It needs so much work. It's been booked into the small shop that's worked on all my bikes previous. Because you betcha I took this back to Harley and said it rides like awful. And um, they just shrugged and well, that's how it is. So, yay. But another reason why I did this was so I could give my bike to my mum's partner, Gaz. I mean, he is a stepdad to me. He's so good to her. The family home is just in amazing condition because he works as a councilman. And so I gave it to him so that hopefully we could go for rides together at some point. I hate this bike. Guys, we're not done. We're still going, right? Look, there's, there's another door. This has now turned into my office. And nugget storage. Guys, I have so many nuggets for dank pods. It's insane. Thanks to you guys, I picked up a secondhand one of these. Literally, 98% of all videos have been edited on a MacBook. And to have a real rig, you know, yes, I've gone back to Mac. Windows doesn't exist to me anymore. Linux for life. And then finally, <laughs> right, so I, I've been collecting vintage games since forever. It's how me and my old mate James know each other. It, most of these I picked up in 2007 for like $3 each. <laughs> All of these consoles, friends gave to me when they left house. So like, oh, do you want my Dreamcast? I'm like, well, of course I want your Dreamcast. And for Garbage Time, my, my vlog channel, you bet you I want to play some of these. It's a total man cave in here. <laughs> <laughs> Speakers all set up. A channel that really inspires me is AVGN. Like he's got Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Well, man, I've got my own games that tortured my youth that I would love to talk about. And they're gonna go up on um, Garbage Time. Who's that idiot there? Hey, look at that idiot. I mean, I'm so into cars because of Mighty Car Mods as well. <laughs> you know, another set of heroes of mine. You bet you I love those boys. Marty Mook, come and taste the nugget. So as you can see, I'm up to a lot. <laughs> You all want me to make more content? Well, you that's what the warehouse is for. I stream four times a week on Twitch. I've started a second channel. It's been delayed for, for reasons and neighbor problems. They'll get a garbage time video, don't you worry. So yeah, if you want to see me do more of a vlog style thing, jump on over there. Frank's there. I'm sorry I'm not on social medias. My life has been so much healthier getting away from it for the most part. Like, people begged me for a Twitter, so I felt I needed to do it. But then I never have anything to post. I really would rather just make a video about stuff and share that way. I had an email I used to list until it literally got clogged with spam and advertising offers. So, you know, that's a loss. I've had some lame run-ins where someone got my mobile number and would call me at weird hours and leave weird messages like, Are you the iPod guy? So I had to burn that number and start again. If I appeared in Discord, it would turn into static with the amount of people trying to talk and then there were people making alt accounts of me you know and then saying awful things to the point where people would email me saying i want an apology for this and they'd have a screenshot of you know dank pod saying something awful so i had to leave i'm so sorry guys it was the only safe way to stop it was to just not be there i had to get rid of my ebay account too because folks were using the messaging system to ask for headphone advice and to beg for free stuff so i know a lot of folks want me to do a po box sort of thing you know but with all these experience, it's just so hard. I'm so sorry. If this is a one man thing. I'm spoiled anyways. You've seen all my nuggets and toys. I'm so well stocked and like, I don't want to seem like I'm being rude. I'm so sorry. But there were some things that came in before COVID that I got to quickly show you so the people who sent them know that yes, I did get them. Sorry that I've lost names, but hopefully you know who you are. Like, it was COVID, it was nuts. Someone sent me an iPod that arrived so awfully that United States Postal Service had to apologize. Can't show you the front because it's covered in, oh wow, the iPod just falls straight out. <laughs> <laughs> Can't show details, but look at the pretty stamps. Woodstock ones, yay. Oh, wow, that boy's had a hard life, huh? Someone sent me this bag of nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a U2 one. Oh, that's wicked. And a Firewire guy. And a Firewire cable. Oh, that's useful. So there you go. Yes, I do have a U2 pod. Someone sent me Polish treats 
and they gave me the full spiel about them, about how they work. Sugar is my biggest heel. It's so hard to keep the weight off right. And you sent me a whole box of things. I, I had all of them. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> I only kept the wrappers because I knew I was going to talk about it. Are you planning? <laughs> this has been living in the fridge for so long. Oh man, it's still half a chelwa. They're all amazing. I can't take things like this anymore. Like, I'm on, I'm on diets now. But thank you. We, like, Polish treats are amazing. And fellow YouTuber sent me this. Bantam? I, I've got another Bantam, but this thing's amazing. It really is a first-gen iPod knockoff. It is beautiful. And, like, this is going to get its own video at some point. It is that good of a nugget. Thank you so much. And my old mate JC sent me a, sent me some sh choufflés. I'll, I'll do something with them. Just you watch JC. So I've got this tucked away for a special day. I'm not sure when I'm going to use it, but, like, I'm waiting for a special day. AWL Penguin Works sent me this wood bag. Like, man, <laughs> I didn't know you can get wood this thin. Almost looks like a sticker, but then you feel it and it's real wood. And it's actually wrapped around the original back. It's so clever. You still get all the structure of the stainless steel, but then it looks like this. There's their Instagram. Check it out. And big shout out to Elite Obsolete for his iPod store. If you're looking to get a finished pod, where all you do is plug it in and go. Through the iPod Discord back in 2018, 2019, I was looking for fixes for my nugget and Elite was there selling parts. He's been doing it since before it was cool because he always thought it was cool. So I have a link down below if you want to suss out because he really helped me out. He's always been there for the iPod community. He knows pods. And uh, finally, I get a lot of messages from folks telling me that people are stealing the, the Patreon videos with public playlists. I know. I've set it up so my supporters can watch the videos the easiest, so they can add it to their own playlists, enjoy it on their own, and stay on YouTube, as that's where you watch me after all. If I move to Vimeo, it just makes it harder for people to watch, and I don't want to lock it down like that. The best thing I could do to stop people from taking it is to make it as cheap as I can, so less folks are paywalled out. When I downloaded off the internet, I wasn't evil. Just poor. I looked at all the donation services I could, and Patreon's are one that lets you do a one dollar all you can eat. Twenty five cents a video, all edited exactly the same as you see here. And it's because it's my desperate way to find some reliable income. You know, diverse from YouTube. YouTube is not reliable. Patreon is. Or everything that you see built here is all based on my Patreon earnings. Every decision I make. That's why I keep saying you guys build it. And look, yeah, it bums me out that people are pinching it because it's my hardcore fans that are doing it. You have to be a Patreon to get the video link and it's on reddit and discord that they get shared around but it's too rich of me to complain i used limewire as a kid how can i complain about big companies filling stuff with ads and locking down their content if i don't do the opposite now that i'm in their position i just have to hope there are more supporters than thieves and there are so many supporters I, my dream is to have my own house and warehouse. Move back down south, get away from the noise of the city, put myself in a position where I can make videos forever about anything. I'm only talking about the pinched video so people can stop telling me on Patreon about it. Like, it's already so many messages, literally hundreds a week, and I really do try to respond to everyone that reaches out. Um, the only problem is, I've been missing messages now. It's so many, and about 70% of them are headphone and audio questions. I really want to hear from folks, but they're getting really hard to respond to. You know, Headphone questions are like paragraphs and multiple messages. And I only bring it up because my drum stream was actually delayed for months because I got RSI from typing all the headphone questions. <laughs> so to quench them, here's my quick guide. Close backs, DT770s. Yes, 80 ohm to work out of a phone. Open backs, Grados or SR850s. In-ears, KZs or KB-ears. What model? Who cares? Get the ones that look good to you. I'm serious, you can't go wrong. And an amp and a DAC, get a FIO BTR5. The balance out can handle heaps of power. And if you want the HD 600 experience for cheap, HD 58Xs. I've talked about them in cheap headphone videos. And good headphones stay good. Those are my picks for the next foreseeable ages. So I'm sorry if I can't answer all your headphone audio questions. I mean, as you can see, headphones are only a small part of my hobby pool. I'm sorry, the typing is killing me. I don't want to seem rude. I want to hear from you. It's just the headphone questions that are killing me. And Frankie is my genuine pet python. I've had her since she was a bubby. I was buying paint in a hardware store and next door was a reptile shop. The Frank Dynasty began. There's a couple of videos about her on my Garbage Time channel. So, thanks for saving me. Thanks for rewarding my self-destructive need to create stuff. And I, I haven't even shown you the best nuggets. I haven't shown you the funniest headphones or even the mankiest anything. Whether it's dang pods or Garbage Time, we're just getting started. So, I planned a, a, like a proper giveaway for the one million thing, right? 
<laughs> I've spent 500 bucks setting up my own site, right? Using raffle pass. But to do it the way that I want to do it, you need the pro account. Look, it's my pro key. Ready? Watch what happens if verify. You have a raffle pro. Oh, and it's gone. So I bought a pro license as well. And not even that works. Look, it just says... You've got the light one. It's the night of like the upload, guys. <laughs> I haven't even started editing. This raffle has taken up my whole week and I just got to call it. So I'm so sorry. I planned a giveaway. I've already started sending emails to work it out. There will be a giveaway. It'll happen. Thanks for nothing, raffle. Frank, this is all your fault. I'm so mad. God, So that's it. <laughs> Huge video. Oh my gosh. If you think it's long to watch, imagine editing it. Thanks so much. I keep saying it right. And to all my patrons, and especially these stinky names right here, these people pay too much. I actually beg them not to do it, and then they choose to do it. And yes, $1 a month, I direct to videos, help me chase that dream of owning a warehouse. My sister bought me Lego to celebrate. <laughs> it's foods? Ew, they look like human hearts. Ew, oh, this isn't gonna be good, is it? Well, there you go. Like, very casual video yelling at plastic. That's dank pods in it. Thanks so much, mate. I'll see you all next time. Look at this stinker. We know you make the bad smells in there, Frank. You can't hide from me. I know you make the bad smells, Frank. Your tail's still hanging out, Frank. You suck at hiding. I love you. Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. I, if you know, you've come from my one million whatever ramble. You guys are my everything, right? YouTube's all over the place all the time, and you guys just. Every financial decision I make is backed on you guys, and I mean it. You guys are what I base everything on. And my sister bought me Lego, and I'm starting to think that this isn't a full set. <laughs> Hey, is this just a bag of plastic fruit and bread and goblets? Those apples are weirding me out, man. They look like human hearts and arteries. It's actual disgusting. Is that an egg in a plate? Is that an egg in a plate next to what grapes? These cherries? Why are they? Why couldn't they be green? And why couldn't they be? Oh, I'm getting mad at plastic. This is a dank pods video. I'm like, oh, made in Denmark. Mexico, Hungary, China, and the Czech Republic. Oh, it's just made everywhere. Please don't go everywhere. Please don't go everywhere. Please don't go. Oh, okay. I'm so relieved. What plastic way? Oh, no. They're running everywhere. Oh, gosh. No. They're like cockroaches. <laughs> oh, what is this? Emma? Did you just buy me plastic waste? Did you buy me an accessory? Is this an oven? What? Hey, are these plates, are they? Oh, it's the, the oven door. Oh wow, this is this is a lot more low rent than I thought. Yeah? Okay. And then these are the, the burners. We're really using our imaginations here. Oh, destroyed callous hands can't do this. Is that a stove, is it? I like the frying pan, because it looks like the air cleaner on like a 70s muscle car or something. <laughs> brum brum, cock it eggs. And then literally, what? You just egg oh no. <laughs> egg. -g -g. There we go, guys. That's a that's an egg -g -g on a on a stove. And we're cooking bananas. The scale is out the window, guys. Like, I know banana for scale, but imagine one this big in an oven. Like, this is confusing the heck out of me. Lego, you've just created a mishmash of random whatevers. I thought this would be like a little cooking set or something. Like, oh, is this tomato sauce and mustard? Yes, we call it tomato sauce. You deal with it. I will not water down my, my Aussie culture. Uh, sauce containers go, go here. These cherries are bothering me. Not as much as these gross apples. Ooh, ooh, they're like arteries. Ew. Wait, why can't the cherries be red and then these be green? This would be way less offensive green because then like the apple would be green and then the leaf would be green. But they'll go to the effort of coloring and shading the smallest egg yolk I've ever seen. They'll, they'll put the seeds on a watermelon. Oh, so I just saw the bread. <laughs> Well, I guess that makes... Uh, I mean, that's roughing it, guys, if your bread's all... If it's nothing but crust. The grapes go on the stove, too. Oh, no, there's not enough space. Although, something I am in support of is giant pretzels. Like, I want a pretzel that big. Oh, they fit. Hang on. Jewel. Wow! Oh, the pretzels fit in there. Okay, actually, I do like that little pot. Cl clear out, you... Oh, no. Boil them eggs. Boil them eggs. 
Wow, man, with so many eggs. My favorite's the sausages. <laughs> Oh man, there's so many of them. Okay, the hot dogs are my favorite. Bone apple tea. Can we make the ultimate hot dog? No, no we cannot. These are called goblets, aren't they? Like, this is actually a goblet. Well, um, the- Oh, my egg! Well, uh, the packaging's making sense now. This is Lego Extra, where it's just eggs <laughs> and bits and whatevers. <laughs>yet chilled out like amazing bass like everything is separated you can have big wobbling sub bass yet the vocals are crystal clear that's when really bassy music gets fun and just comfort holy heck comfort and like i, I can't dance around this but these are five thousand dollar headphones <laughs> if this was a car show i'd be sitting in a pagani but these are so comfortable because of what they're made of like they are huge but your ears live in just Added luxury, so much space, but they weigh nothing. Which is not true, that's a lie. I lied to you. They're like 400 grams, but they fool everyone who holds them. It's the carbon fiber here. Like, no wonder F1 cars are made of this stuff. It's so strong and it's like a feather, so thin. Amazing CNC machine parts and this big fat leather headband. They're as comfortable as they look. Nay more comfortable than they look. And what I love is this design is quintessentially Romanian, like looking into a Romanian carved fences. Oh, wow. I love that they got a traditional style into their headphones. And then like the technology going on inside of here. Regular headphones and speakers look like this. This is called a dynamic driver and it's just this one piece of material making all the music. So it makes big wobbles for the bass and all the treble and high end stuff is done in between. It's in insane what even the cheapest dinkiest looking little speaker can do then you get planar magnetics which use this insanely thin film with traces on it that just 
It's what makes them so tight sounding and that bass extension. These are on the next level where it's coiled to basically make two speakers within the one. It also directs the sound right to where your eardrums actually are. Look how easily these come off to replace them because they give you another set. I mean, meze, <laughs> that's so beautiful. Gosh, look how much is going on here. And then for your money, they give you this brilliant flight case, which is made of gosh dingus metal. I love dragging these around to places so all my mates can try them. But then meze reach out to me and say that they've created an improved version. And I said, a what version? Uh, yeah, an improved version called the Imperian Elites. They do be looking serious. <laughs> Overall design-wise, it's mostly unchanged, which honestly is fantastic. Why would you create something this comfortable and then not use it again? And honestly, I didn't think there were gonna be many differences. Like they're based on the same platform. Beautiful removing ear cups, the same style driver, but no. These are really different. Same flavor in a lot of ways, but the regular appearance are more chilled out, warmer, which means the top end isn't as sharp. These have more detailed top end, and it feels like they've reined in the bass just a little bit. But honestly, the recording you've just heard barely highlights it. Like, through my MacBook, they almost sound the same. But in person, like, the differences are quite astounding. And just the sound stage, or how 3D and wide it feels. I've heard stuff in music that I swore were noises coming from within my house. I had to take them off to go like, what was that? It's really fun when that happens, like the bongo man in September, right? With these, it sounds like he's in the kitchen nearby. It's super fun. You can't unhear him, by the way. But there's something else that these are doing that is honestly the icing on the cake and ultimately why I adore them so much. Oh, let me introduce you to the stacks. These are electrostatic headphones. They're still that incredibly thin piece of plastic film, but the wires are either side of it, so nothing is touching it. And these were my way of owning incredibly high-end headphones on the cheap, because you betcha they were used. And naturally so, because these are from the 1980s. Let's take a quick listen. And this is why I don't do multiple cheap headphone videos, guys. Because good headphones stay good. They aren't like a console or a phone. Like, if you bought these 40 years ago, to this day, you are still in the top 10% of music listeners. Buy the good thing once. Headphones I've recommended only last year, those headphones are still good. Look, the foam has disappeared. You can see, like, the bare guts of this guy. They still sound great. And it was, like, late 70s they first brought these out. And it shows that super high-end audio was available, but let me show you what you had to do to experience it. Like, mate, the cable isn't long at all. It's only about the same distance as to the nearest bakery, mate. <sniffs> Look how big this cable is. Oh, better ends in one of these big dinguses, right? Which is super annoying. You have to get an adapter. And, uh, uh, the hell does this plug into? Your dog? Oh, silly me. I forgot it needs the energizer. Yeah, an energizer. Here we go. One energizer. There's the ridiculous headphone port. Plugging that dingus in. Plugging it in. Right, mate. I've got my dingle dongus ready to go, mate. Let's go. What? Wait! You need to hook this up to full-on amplified speaker power. They wire in like a pair of floor standing speakers. And man, these need more volume than my huge boys made by Adelaide speakers. No lie, these need insane power to run. Let me say, while these are running, I'd hate to chew on this cable. Well, mate, so these won't work out of my MacBook Air then. No, you ridiculous dingus. These barely work out of anything. <laughs> they need a dedicated place in your house to use them. They are plumbed in like an air conditioner, right? <laughs>
Oh, my poxel, who did this? Both sets of the Imperians are 32 ohms. They run out of a MacBook, no worries, and I mean it. But I love playing with flat players and DAX and amps, but sometimes I just want to lay in bed and watch YouTube. I don't want to have to rig up a whole crazy rig. And just how stinking comfortable these are, just plug them in, Boom. A lot of high-end headphones are super picky about what they plug into. Where well, you need big amplified power, or in the case of the stacks, a room. Yet Meze have made these beauties and they are so unfussy. It reminds you of like a Tesla self-driving itself and then people were like, wow and then it outdrags a Ferrari. It's like, well, these are insanely beautiful and comfortable, yet sound amazing out of an iPod. Plug them into your bean. On the topic of high-end audio, I'm finally getting into vinyl. I finally have a speaker system that can make the most of it. And I made the trip into Addicted to Audio store here in Adelaide. They're the guys I buy all my Grados from. It's where I get my Fio stuff from. And I've always used their online store, but I actually drop by in person for advice. It's a showroom. It's meant to what stuff they have on display to try, and they even even have vinyl days on Saturdays, so you can drop past and try it out. They have a hundred thousand dollar speaker system set up. Yes, a hundred thousand. <laughs> Welcome to speakers. Mine were three grand, handmade in Adelaide. I got a bargain. <laughs> so while shopping for a turntable, I brought the Mezes in with me to get some opinions from people who like actually sell this stuff. These are the only $5,000 headphones I've ever tried. <laughs> they agreed that these are insanely comfortable and that the Elites have more top end detail and the Imperians have dat bass. All of us prefer the Elites, honestly. I'm a drummer. I like the extra top end for cymbals and percussion or whatnot, and that bass still fat, man. But they loved them. They agree, at the super high end, it's all about preference. You know, what's more important to you? And for me, these just offer so much of everything. And thanks for all the turntable help, guys. I've only ruined one record so far. And the last point I want to make is supporting a company that's doing things the way we all want companies to be doing things. Meze is Romania, and all the Romans going, God, that's us, man. They love it. <laughs> Hello. And they're made in Romania. These guys are supporting their homeland and offering dream jobs to these people who spend their days making amazing audio equipment. Meze are really proud of what they're doing and they've been chipping away for ages. Like, they included this letter. The sparkle paper. Guys, you know I'm a real softie for stuff like this. This is, this is super nice. And this is why smaller companies rule. They can actually engage with their customers and support their products properly. I'm not going to get handwritten notes from Sony. And the worst support experiences I've ever had were always at the hands of the biggest companies and we wonder how they get so rich. So if you want to try some Meze's but you don't have five grand naturally they have the classic 99s as well. Meze's all about giving you everything you need like this is a hard case and you have no idea how hard it is to transport headphones around. These things are like wilting birds man it was terrifying driving them here I can't wait to take these home. Like, when friends come over and I give them headphone tours, everyone gravitates towards these. Self-adjusting headband, closed backs, that's actual walnut there. They're still not cheap. I mean, instead of five grand, these are about 500 Aussie bucks or whatever it is in your currency, you work it out. But with the case and cables, and they're stinking beautiful. Most of my mates, honestly, they love the Imperians, but then they go, I would buy these though. <laughs> and if you want an even cheaper set, they do the Neos, where instead of Walnut, it's plastic. And Meze are mad lads and want to offer a 20% discount for anyone on the fence of getting some of these 99s. And I really support what they're doing, and heck, if they want to offer them cheaper, then, then why not? <laughs> Use this code on the link below. It's valid for two weeks. So if you're watching this after two weeks, well, I don't know what to say. Well, I mean, they're still worth the money anyway. But quickly, on the actual topic of, you know, if you dropped five grand on a set of headphones. My pairs of stacks are almost 40 years old, and it's like they're made out of melted down bin bags. Yet they're still here, and they dazzle anyone that wears them. These are forever headphones. The person who bought those stacks all that time ago would still be in that upper crust the headphone users to this day. Good headphones stay good. You're not buying something that's going out of date in a few years. You're buying something something that you could hand off to someone in 30 years time. Those stacks still cost proper money. Doesn't matter how old they are. And these are built on an insane standard. So if the stacks could hang around for 40 years, these could do it no problems. Playing out of your iPod or whatever. I love these, like these are my favorite headphones ever now. So well done Meze. I love what you're up to, but 
that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, because, mate, $1 a month, I do extra videos. Over the last year and a bit, I've been putting together my own speaker rig. Speakers are so expensive, and like, I finally put something together that I'm pretty proud of, to be honest, and I, I love the sound of it. It makes me smile ear to ear, and I'm finally getting into vinyl. There'll be a vid about that at some point, but I want to show you my rig. Frank will be there stinking up the vid, too. So thanks so much, and, mate, I'll see you all next time. It's happened, guys. Frank has pooed in her hammock. I really thought the hammock was out of bounds for pooing, and it disappoints me to learn that Frank is officially lawless from this day on. In fact, Frank, Frank, the hammock, your sanctuary. Don't let the couch. Hey, it's the after show, and Frank's here. Frank, not in the couch. I've told you about the couch. We're talking about my speakers. I've finally put this together and it's it's finally finished. Oh, that devious witch, Frank. Frank, no, what are you doing? The first thing I picked up was my Cambridge CX-A81. I paid extra for this to get the stonkier version because I hoped to be running better speakers at some point. And also this has a dedicated headphone out. So this was my first proper DAC. I actually used it as my DAC for my home studio as well. Cause yeah, it was a big purchase for me and I did get all the value I could. Oh my gosh, we're in trouble. I'll worry about Frank in a bit. Now, these speakers, right? So they're from Adelaide speakers. They're made here in SA. You get that SA goodness. Ascension. These are their biggest boy ones. I mean, I don't have big hands, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, like cause that, that's a big telly, yeah? Uh, I think it was 500 bucks for a massive 4K. The quality is low. It's the big telly, right? That make them almost look normal. They're not, they're humongous. Solid dingus wood, like they weigh a ton. They're full of foam and baffling. Like they're not just speakers crammed in there. There's a lot more to it than that. And there's crossovers, right? Because only two wires come out the back, but there's three speakers. And that's what the crossovers are doing. Sending the audio to which one of these blurry boys. Yes. There are the floats. They hang out here. Oh my gosh, what's happening? Okay. All right, she's still here. <laughs> come on, Frank, come on. She's gone, man. I don't know. Oh gosh, I don't, I don't want to have to pull her out. The stacks live here. The energizer's tucked away. And that's what that insanely long headphone cable's for. It's so you can sit back on your comfy snake chair. It took me about six months to hunt down a matching pair of these really old school ones because I wanted old school ones. Because yeah, I want to prove. Good headphones stay good. And it's cause like the coolest thing about speakers is the fact that, you know, two people can share the exact same experience. Headphones that's hard, unless you've got a breeding pair. <laughs> I love the stacks, they're brilliant. And being able to sit down with a friend and listen to an album through that Cambridge, like that's supplying the power to these, like, oh. But the biggest addition, and I mean it has been, my hippo. No, it's the subwoofer. It's an REL. T7X, I, I, I think I'm saying that right. Out of all the individual components of this setup, this guy's in second to the Cambridge. That was two and a half thousand Aussie dollar dues. It's brilliant, it's worth every dollar. This has a pair with 3,000, so 1,500 each, which for just the, the scale of them and their sound, right, they are a bargain. This guy was 2,000 for just the subwoofer and Ariel only makes subwoofers. This thing has been the best purchase ever in my audio everythings. Man, like I had a cheap subwoofer and it just does the This thing, you got really, really low bass and then regular bass and upper bass. Yes, the many basses. Sub bass down at the bottom, but at the top, that's where the kick drum is. Oof, right at the very top. This thing punches you and then the sub bass is just independent. Oh. Man, and it just lifts the whole system. They tell you to put it in the corner of a room and you dial it in where you, you can't hear that it's there. And I mean it, it's not like, you know, oh mate, all the bass is coming out of the, the, the ottoman there. No, the whole sound just lifts. And somehow it, it increases the sound stage. I talked to Addicted to Audio about it where I picked it up. And it's because of like frequencies and harmonics in music, like a lower note has relations to the higher notes. And so everything gets pushed up. That, that's why there's music degrees. There's a lot to talk about. Oh man, actual, uh-oh. 
Aha! Well, well, well. And hiding in here is the the vinyl man that I've barely used. I've only just got it. I've only put a couple of discs on it because I've never used vinyl for it, and I mean it. I, I got some now. Look, they're brand new. It's super fun. It's great. This is way more hardcore of a turntable than I wanted to get. I, I bought an automatic one and it just went terribly. <laughs> so, so I went back and then I ended up getting this super hardcore Avid one. Ingenium, I believe it's called. The motor is separate. There's no chassis. <laughs> it's really fussy. It's not automatic, but it's fun. It's It sounds brilliant. You know, it's with my new rig and a, and a moon phono amp because yes, they need phono amps. It's just, whoa, man, vinyl just keeps stacking on. I love it. And look, it hides away. And that's my rig. I, I think it's a bargain for, for how it sounds. And you've bet you I brought the ears in to record, right? And it's got a verse the TV. Have a, have a smell. <laughs> Little bit too much subwoofer still, but I did have it pretty loud because I had the ears all the way big here. It's all fun, anyways. So, thanks so much for the support. I really mean it. I mean, what two years ago, I, you know, <laughs> I was waiting for the casino to pay me, and now I get to like you know, use stuff like this. It's nuts. Let's get the noodle out. Looking for my Franklin, looking for my Franklin. It oh, goodness, no, hang on. Oh, my goodness, look at this. Look at this witch. We caught you, Frank. The couch bandit. You have to go back to bed, Frank. Th thanks for being patrons. Frank, give us a lick. Come on, just one. One lick. People love you, Frank. Oh, why am I wearing the fancy, fancy, fancy gloves? It's because we're engaging in my favoritest, favoritest, favoritest thing. Oh no, it's the nugget lucky dip. It is so big now that there are actually boxes of nuggets waiting to get into the bag. If I put any more nugs in the bag, mate, she's gonna rupture. And when the bag ruptures, we don't talk about that. But it's been six months since I've done a main channel one of these. Look, the premises is simple. This is literally a big bag of the low lowest of low mp3 players like bought in big bulk lots many of them free and to see number one will it turn on and number two does i have someone's embarrassing playlist still on it nuggets 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 all oh, right to the bottom <sighs> it's a mid-tier nugget made by a reputable brand but still something that you don't really want <laughs> oh the samsung ones are the worst i mean People complain about Apple changing their connectors every 10 years or so, but Samsung had 13 billion of them. Please be the one. <gasps> I got it! Alright, everyone, stand back, stand back. I'm arming a nugget. Three, two, hang on. Dingus. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when we learned why you're in the bag. Oh, oh it's gone. No? Wow. <laughs> it's barely alive. It's just, it says connected, but it's not appearing on the computer. And this dot connector is, oh, all right. <gasps> Ew. Oh, it's still trying to live. You all done? Oh, my duck. That one doesn't count. Like, just... Just pretend that one never happened. Ooh, another mid-tier one. Like, again, like a reputable brand. But then still, so, like, why would I want this? Like, it's meant to be like this, not like this. Phillips, eight gigs. That's pretty good. Oh, it's mini USB. It's a good thing I've got three billion of these. All right, everyone look out. All right. Come on, my child. It's safe now. Actually, it's not safe. You can just pull it apart like an orange. Well, this is going about as well as every single one of these ever does. <laughs> like, oh no. Alright, alright, that one. Uh, ew, alright, it's a very low tier one. And I swear I've seen this design before with this big stupid lanyard forehead that it's got. It's made out of metal, but it's also filthy. Dench. 
Da what? Dan Sri. I'm gonna go with that. Whoa, it's micro USB. Ooh, ooh fancy. No one has to have any eyes up. A mom and a nugget that's gonna do nothing, right? I expect nothing now. And that's why. <laughs> Oh, the screen's been exploded. Oh, that's so depressing. <laughs> it appeared on the computer though. M01, record? <gasps> oh, please not, please don't be a butt dial. I woke up crazy. Oh, I was so black and bright for Dari's. For Dari's people, I got my Dari, I didn't want to see my Dari. You wanna see my Ferrari, 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 is this just me recorded in 2017? Oh mate, like this one time, like I pulled out this MP3 player, hey mate, and like I plugged her in, and it turns out like my cousin's on there, hey, and I'm like, guys, mate, you're singing a tune, mate, I love you heaps, hey. Oh, Dan Shreer, you've been the best so far, which isn't saying a lot, just give me that. Ew, the battery's still going. Oh no, there it goes. Okay, sweet death. That was special. That was special because they never have anything in the recordings. It's always an accidental, like, butt dial sort of thing. Ooh, that one. Damn it! <laughs> no, not another one! <laughs> no, I don't want to do it! What are the odds? The only two of these I've ever seen just appear in the nugget dip. These could be the only two ever sold. Wow! <laughs> Yes! Oh no! Uh, oh, you, you okay? I, I don't speak that language. Yes? It appeared on the computer! It's got stuff on it! Yes! There's Drake! 1980, I'm pretty sure that's not true. We got Nelly, Biggie Jiggy mixtapes, <laughs> Biggie Smalls, slamming. <laughs> oh man, someone really loved their mid-tier Phillips nugget. They really moved in. I mean, it wound up in the bag, which means it was abandoned, but oh, okay. Well, these are the images that are on it. <laughs> uh, good. Marbles. Not bad. Not good, but not bad. What happens when I just yoink it? Yeah, she did. Not bad. Man, a lot of mid-tier nuggets, hey? Usually it's bootlegs. Maybe the bootlegs are at the bottom. I gotta, I'm gonna I'm gonna go right. Okay, I can feel the floor and that one. It's a Sony! This isn't a nugget at all! This is this is a real guy! What the heck's going on? I'm just pulling out like decent ones. Decent by nugget dip standards. <laughs> My problem is the Sony's love having proprietary everything to do with these. So I'm very surprised it's got a mini USB. Alright, arm on it. Here we go. Mm-hmm. And that walk man! Okay. Oh no, what's happening? It's full of glee. <laughs> yes! Ah, oh, it's got Akka Daka, Backstreet Boys. Ah, oh, Blink-182, awesome. So much glee, <laughs> so much glee. Oh man, this person loved their walking man. Any system of it down? Shrek 2, good. <laughs> Excellent. Soldier Boy, he makes consoles. System of a down, yeah, awesome. I love this thing now. Ooh, pictures? Ooh, all right, the flowers. I'm guessing these are stock images now, actually. Um, hmm, yeah, yeah, okay, I think they're stock stock images, yes. <laughs> UEFA highlight? Oh, okay, right, yeah, it's the, it's the thing that Sony smashes on there. <laughs> oh! Soccers, kick the ball. Will the battery hold? Here we go. The answer is a resound. Oh! Oh wow, the screen is cooked. Creating light. Well, come on then. You know, when you unplug an iPod, you just immediately can start using it. Sony. 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 So Sony. Okay. Oh yeah, that's nice and dim. That no. Oh no. Why is this so dim? I mean, you know, it doesn't matter how good the capabilities are of something. If you can't easily use it, like. These controls stink butts. Uh, yeah, look, power off. Just, just go away. Just, just go away. Remember guys, it's in the bag for a reason. <laughs> Man, where are the gross manky bootlegs? Where's the really gross stuff? 
Like, that feels gross. Ooh, and it is. <laughs> this is a creative, though. This isn't a bootleg. This is a mid-tier. Oh, it's, it's got the freak standard of USBs. I mean, this is old. I've actually got one of these new in its packet. You can believe no one wanted to buy these. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this is a really early boy. I think this predates the iPod. All right, here we go. Here we go. Get excited. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh no, that's bent out of shape. Yeah, the, the connector has been hit at some point. Or is that proprietary? I swear this is the right cable. She's gone, man. She's gone. Well, you win the award currently for most disappointing nugget of the day. Right, and I thought this was bad. But I at least had a cable for this. Oh, my duck and puck cell. Come on. I want to end with a manky looking rubbish thing. Manky looking rubbish thing. Yes! <laughs> Ooh, now we're talking the size of a nano with the fuggliness of a mini. <laughs> Beautifully brought together at last. That's not true. I love iPod minis. Ooh, this is so rank and I'm so happy. The Sylvania SMPK4083. Oof, that is catchy. And I like how all of this is offset slightly. Mm, this one's looking extra manky. God, we might even have a fire, guys. Oh, this is exciting. All right, come on. Dazzle me. Yeah, I am dazzled. <laughs> Man, they even spelt loading right. Like, yeah. Oh, come on, appear on the computer. Do what the Samsung couldn't do. It could. Oh, yes, and it's got Block Party on it. That's excellent. Oh, it just dumped itself. Don't. Come on. I know you're a rough nugger, but just please cooperate. Come on, come back. Come on, yes, all right, come on, we've got to work quickly. Kings of Leon, nice. Sex on fire three times. Good, good. And 2010, man, 11 years this nugget's been hanging out. Recordings, please. What the? Um, <laughs> sunshine of your love. Okay, this isn't where the recordings are. Damn, I actually got really excited. I thought this was going to be like three billion recordings to laugh at. <gasps> Voice, there's one. Oh, nine. <laughs> My name's Dominic 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 <laughs> what happened? Did they have a car accident there at the end? <laughs> Is that the only thing that ended that recording? <laughs> oh, poor Dominic. He died doing what he loved. Saying the name Dominic. Wow. I, I mean, I can't believe it. Actually, two nuggets had recordings on them that actually were recordings. They were done by annoying children, but hey, I'll take it. Matt, this thing is loaded up. Look, Wolf Mother, Sunshine of Your Love, so I'm guessing this is Mums, and then like, and then the kids have gotten to it. <laughs> Very cool. D will it survive being unplugged? No, <laughs> it will immediately turn off. <laughs> I'm not gonna grit you, you saved the day. You, you delivered more than the Samsung could. Well, uh, to recap, um, disappointing, uh, uh, disappointing, semi-interesting, not bad-ish, strange, very disappointing, incredibly disappointing, and the savior nugget for all time. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, mate, because one dollar a month, I direct some videos. And, you know, I did say that, you know, primarily, like, I'll do nugget lucky dips for my patrons, and so you're probably sitting there going, like, well, so they're missing out, right? Well, you're wrong! What's better than a nugget lucky dip? It's doing two of them! We're just gonna go again! <laughs> the patrons stay in the lead with the amount of nugget dips experienced. It could be a bad thing, I don't know. So that's what we're doing, we're just gonna do it again. So, thanks so much for watching, mate. I'll see you all next time. What a horrible noise. It's the sound of Frank against Styrofoam. Frank, that's horrible. The, the, look at me. Wow, it's the after show, who cares? It's not good lucky dude. It's Dick uh, Duncan! You mean everything to me and you make this whole thing possible. Who cares? Let's start Duncan! Dunk, 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 dunk! Whoa! 
Wow! It's the toppest tier nugget! It's an iPod! Whoa! Uh, I wasn't... Pfft. This thing's worth more than the whole bag of nuggets. Here we go, top tier nugget time. Uh-oh. Okay, all right, the screen's cooked, but it did turn on. That's it, mate, you can do it. Man, this screen is so much better than the nuggets I'm used to looking at. <laughs> you're taking a bit too long now, mate. Actually, you're making me anxious. Mate, look how cooked the screen is. <laughs> Ooh! Oh, yes! Come on, Bubby. Come on. But wow, man, this thing is running so slow. There's something up with it. Normally, these are instant. Katrina's iPod. <laughs> Wow, it's full! 1300 songs! Oh, we have to go looking! Plays. Top play only seven? This whole thing is full of music that just hasn't been listened to. <laughs> Who won? It's Usher, Feet Pitbull, Britney Spears, Jay Z, 50 Cent, Wankster, <laughs> Backstreet Boys, The Lonely Islands, Jizz in My Pants. And I'm on a boat and like a boss. <laughs> Excellent. I, I totally vibe with this person's mix. Movies? None. TV show? None. Audio? But none. Oh, dance mix, man. But then they didn't play any of the songs, so... <laughs> Will she survive being pulled out of the, the compute here? Th the answer is a resounding no. <laughs> Ah, oh, sweet death for you. Can't wait for that battery to expand and be a fire hazard. Wow, we were graced with a top tier nugget, guys. That is, oh, only for you patrons, mate. Oh, oh that's a big one. Are you? Oh, I hate these manky bootleg touches. Oh, it's a Kobe. That's a cromulent brand, surely. I've actually got quite a few brand new boxed Kobe's. I mean, can you believe people didn't buy these? Doobity doo, I'm in the nug. A doobity do, wish I didn't have to. Booba do, ooh! Hey, that screen's awful, but look at her go. Mmm. No name. Ooh, she's struggling. Okay. Video. Record? Oh. Photo. Record? Oh. Music. Alt? Oh. Right. This looks like it's been wiped or something. Hang on, let's, let's see if I can eject it and then use the guy here. Yeah, let's explore. Come on, are you- are you wiped? All songs. Oh, damn it. DV? Does that mean camera? Yay, goody, alright. So it is one time I'm like using this rando nugget that I found in a bag, mate. And I figured, man, all I gotta do is lift up like this and look, man. Dank, dank pods with, with the thing. Look, well, I think this is a professional quality camera and it's gotta be no problems. Do you know? Such beautiful video quality and I'm sure gonna be using this for future videos to come. Oh, my pucks. Wow, quality nuggets, man. Oh, let's finish on a winner. Let's finish on an even better one. Oh, <laughs> oh no. An acoustic uh, bottom of the barrel bootleg crap. Alright, here we go. Button your shirts. Ooh, wow. And do we pull out three working nuggets on the hop? Choo choo choo. Mel, come on. That no name. Yes, load. Movie. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is just what you want on your nugget, man. Shares strong enough. <laughs> that I make. That's beautiful. Music. Mmm, Peppy. Photos. No. Recordings. None. T texts. None. Ooh, the battery works. Oh, of course I have to update their library. No, no, no. Give me share. Give me... No, come on. Give me share. I don't know if you can even see it. There, all right, here we go. Format error. Oh. My puxel. And my sausage. Well, that was pretty good. I mean, these sad nuggets are still trying to survive. Uh, yeah, I mean, none of them are worth owning. I mean, except maybe this one, if you could get the battery go and replace the sc No, just don't bother, actually. Just get an iPod Mini and be happy. <laughs> well, thank you so much, man. There you go. Everyone's got a big fill of nuggets. And, and now you're all sick from the nuggets, because this isn't healthy. But thank you so much. I really do appreciate you. And I'll see you all next time. Ooh. Ooh. 
dirty birds. These are a bootleg of Sennheiser MX500s. It's just the most common. I, they must have gone public or something where it's so, like you're allowed to use this. I don't know. Like these stink. They really, really stink. But you know, these come with an undesirable product. They're kind of just thrown in there. I wanted to see if I could find a pair of headphones that are bespoke, and that's what you bought them for, that are worse than these. We need a referee. Hey, look. Um, yes. I mean, look, MX500. KB here, these folks are proper, and they actually watch this channel. I have their KS2s. I like the green. And I actually use their neons in my drum streams. So KB is Stellas, uh, I saw reviews for these and they get pretty good reviews. And then I see the price. You can get these for about three bucks. I haven't even tried these yet. Oh, that's a nice egg bag that is. Wow, look, it fits a whole duck in there. You could fit multiple ducks in here. Duck, an egg, and a sausage. That's a good egg bag. Foam lads. Oh man, they're transparent as well. <laughs> okay, I'm interested. The cable actually feels pretty dang good. Got the M15 here, right? We're, we're doing dirty buds seriously, mate. Gold plated tip. KB, you're spoiling us. They are headphones. <laughs> I mean, you know, they're a bit V sounding. There's like a bit of extra top end and all that sort of thing. But three bucks. Like, <laughs> Give me back my duck. G give it, that's it, and the egg. Okay, we're gonna start semi cromulently and then we're gonna march down to the depths of nothingness. Look. I think I got this from an office works or something, and it's like, yeah, you can pick up guys like this from the supermarket. 20 bucks, I think. Watch out, Doug. Oh, my puck cell. Hmm, flat cable. There's the Bud Boys. It's kind of turned powdery and chalky looking. <gasps> no gold plated tip. Come on, KB is dishing that out for three bucks. The cable feels okay though, it's fine. Yeah, they're, they're just strangely powdery. <laughs> you know when like cheap chocolate's been left in a school bag for too long kind of thing? Hmm. Yeah, extra, I mean, you know, look, they, they sound okay. <laughs> yes, they have extra bass. People like that. You know, the problem is they crackle. <laughs> Like, it's, it's like there's something going on inside of it. And I, cause I know it's not the M15. <laughs> well, mate, I wonder what's causing the crackling. Is it like the bespoke audiophile player made to high standards? All those earbuds I got at the Woolies. Oh, anyone regular to this channel just knows what's gonna happen. sound just went like one of them popped immediately it just went oh man uh and people like oh the diablo never kills anything man that was the quickest kill yet <laughs> oh we're gonna need you soon let me tell you you know like this is like the headphones you get that make your kids shut up on a car ride or something not offensive but gosh darn you know Three, three bucks. These next ones, I forgot that I even had coming to me. It was back when I was even semi-interested in doing wish things until I know that it's like a big plastic waste factory and half that winds up in the oceans. Yes, I do need to do a Team C thing at some point. But I, I think literally these took eight months to get to me. Yes, they're from Wish. I think they wanted 10 bucks for these professional rock and roll bees. Hi-fi shocking sound. <laughs> these had better absolutely dazzle me, mate. Better not be like shocking as in how can someone release something like this? It's sports friendly. Packaging is suspiciously nice. Offers full range super sound. <laughs> Their words, not mine. Oh, it's resealable, like a pack of rice crackers or something. I guess that makes it easier to return when you hate them. Uh. Oh, do I have to assemble this crap myself? <laughs> Why are there so many bags? Mm-hmm. Bud boys, ear dinglers, I don't care. Uh, yeah, like really thin, cheap cable, whatever. I, why put a protector on it like this? I mean, like gold plated. Ooh, look out. We're on par with the $3 KB ears now. <laughs> but why waste the production making these? Like anyone who's buying off Wish doesn't give a... Oh my gosh, it has a microphone. <laughs> Excellent. Um, yeah, they're transparent. And just, they look like just standard conventional headphones in an IEM design. All right, now I'm very curious. Um, look, 
they're not as bad as I thought they'd be. But they do have a lot of bass. <laughs> like, a lot of bass. Yeah, they're just really undetailed. But, I mean, oh, how's that microphone? They gotta go up against the KS2's microphone. So, like, it's one time, like, I couldn't afford headphones, hey? So, I figured, like, Matt, I'll just make my own headphones. And then, like, I remember that I'm extremely untalented, hey? So, I thought, well, I'll just, like, sing to myself, mate. And then, like, on my own music system... But then that makes like PowerPoint presentations hard when I'm like trying to say the words and be the background music at the same time. <laughs> but what am I kidding, mate? I'm just laying on the floor. I don't have any prospects. Can I have some money, please? So like, I finally got the courage, hey, to stand up and do something, hey. Like I see a lot of kids looking for something to do, mate. So man, a skate park would be amazing. Man, like get kids off the streets, hey. So I went to the local council, booked a bit of their time. It had a PowerPoint presentation ready, hey. And like, I wanted a big drive and be like, boots, 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 boots. But then, like, I'm trying to talk at the same time. I was like, boots, 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 boots. Kids need a boots, boots, skate park to boots, boots, to find like a boots, boots, a place to spend their boots. And, like, suffice to say, like, they actually smashed me over the head with a chair. Skate park got built, though, hey. I've got a concussion. The microphone is okay. I think that's more the benefits of a cable and why like we just need to bring the headphone jack back because wireless headphones have the worst mics ever. But you hear that scratching scrapey noise? That's my beard up against these thin cables. <laughs> I mean, these feel like nothing. Whereas these are conventionally cheap and are actually built properly. <laughs> Yeah, these are pretty nasty. I've never exploded a pair of in ears. This would be fun. Why are they noisy boys? Oh! Oh no! <laughs> you know, it's again this one. <laughs> Oh man, none of these boys are handling the Diablo at all. <laughs> oh, you're doing great work, man. Let's get lower. That's right. What you want is some super bass headphones. That's right. Headphones for, for super bass. Right, look, oh, look at that nugget right on the front. You, you know this guy's in for a good time. Silver plated? Whoa! The $3 KB ears don't even flex about their gold plug, but these guys are like, Oi, we've got the worst one! Super bass sound! Oh man, these things are heaps high tech. They're DVD compatible. And, and a 10016 with a swish around it. I don't get it. Digital stereo earphone? Wait, only one? It was a buy one, get one free. The HP 16. Don't want to see the HP 15. Nothing interesting. In we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, th I, th I thought that would resist a little bit more. Oh my gosh, there's that silver plated plug. <gasps> a genuine feature, according to Amiga. Yeah. They, they are an original design. Man, I remember when Nugget phones had these really manky screens on these. What? How old are these? Doesn't say. God, the M15's probably just looking at me going, mate, what are you doing? Oh no, they fit the worst. Oh, my eggs and sausages. Boo! Oh, my pucks up! I might have lost control there. Just a little bit. Um, yeah. I, to say I was disappointed in these is, um, a bit low-key, really. I, I was just so dazzled that they were actually some of the least spacey headphones I've, I've ever heard. And there's sausages everywhere. Well, if you thought that was as low as we're going, I, I've got some news for you. It actually gets really steep now. This is the last pair. And I just want you to sit and think for a bit about what, what's the worst pair of headphones that you could imagine. I don't think you're getting low enough. It is my displeasure to burden your eyes and soul with what I have found, which is the Avoco earphone. Don't even get in the territory of earphones. This is earphone. I mean, <laughs> there are no features to be listed, just audio. <laughs> Copyright 9394, and it is stick. You believe no one wanted this? Oh no. Oh, there it is. There are spider webs on the inside. Looks like something you'd find in Chernobyl. Wow, look at this braided cable. Oh 
Oh no, it just keeps going, man. Look, it's like a ball of yarn that your nan would use. It's still going. <laughs> it's still going. <laughs> no, we're only, we're only halfway. What? Oh man, gosh, you can find your way home from the bakery with these. Actually, that should be a feature. Why don't they put the... Holy wow. I mean, it said it's six meters long, and man, I'm going to believe it. I'm really anxious. This this doesn't this doesn't look right. It's mono, by the way. I mean, of course it's mono. It's only one speaker. It's up M15. High fire weights. We are there, guys. We have found them. We have found the worst headphone that you, you can get, surely. Like, apart from it fitting awful, can you believe that this is not very ergonomic for your ear? Most bootleggy pieces of junk are like this, right? They're nothing but mids. Most of the music lives in the mids. That's how you kind of get away with it. And then sub bass and the top end, you know, that's what's missing out. And then, you know, you've got the supermarket headphones, which are kind of the opposite. They've got extra bass and extra top end. This has nothing but the very tippiest top. No mids. No, no, nothing. I'm guessing this is just so you can hear a scratchy voice, like, for some reason that you need to be six meters away from. <laughs> this is the most low tier thing that I can ever imagine. Like, you know, KB ear, like, these sound like Meze Elites in comparison. Gold plated tip, nice cable in a retail box with a duck sized egg bag. Like, that's $3. Well, I'm very anxious as to what the Diablo thinks. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's just how miserable they are. Like, there, there's no fun to be had. Zero fun. And no doubt, I bet there's still three billion of these gracing the planet with all sorts of different boxes. But honestly, it's the earphone audio that got me. And that's an old price tag that says five bucks. Yeah, rip off. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Like, and shoot things from my patrons, especially these stinky names on here, because my $1 a month, I do extra videos. And so, you know, I mentioned that I'm on my first vinyl journey. I literally have never used vinyl before. Mum would let me touch it. But now I've risen to the level where I've been given my parents' like vinyl collection and there's rippers in there. But I, I'll, you know, I'll show you what I'm listening to. And Frank might even show up. Who knows? It's a big world. So thanks so much. And mate, I'll see you all next time. What? What do you want? Nothing? I knew it. You wanted trouble. Well, here it comes, Frank. You're gonna have trouble. Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. Frank's in bed. I'm just gonna bother her real quick. Sorry, Frank. This is just how you pay rent, sweetie. I know. I've bothered you. I'm sorry. No, don't run away. You, you're running? Let me see that face of caution. Focus. There it is. That's a face of caution. To my gentle love. I'm sorry, Frank, but, you know, the, the people love you. I love you. All right, we're going to leave Frank alone now. Everyone say goodnight, Frank. Good night. Bye. So in another after show, I showed my speaker show. I finally have speakers that I really dig. And so getting into vinyl is a lot more fun. So I'm going to show you my discs. Yeah, I've never used vinyl before and it's actually been super fun. Like I'm saving everything for the video or like all the main thoughts, right? But I mean, I'm having heaps of fun. I'm loving it. Man, System of a Down, first album, it cranks out of vinyl. I've, I can't remember when I've actually sat down and listened to this. So I've got it brand new. And so like, you know, funny excuse to really sit down with it. Same, a lot of these are actually that reason. Like, you know, like the track No One Knows is awesome. Like for drums, it's one of my favorites to play along to, but I've never sat down and listened to all of it. White Stripes, like amazing how big and fat a duo can sound. Miles Davis kind of blue. I'm a jazz man. I am in just rage. Right, um, Miles Davis Bitches Brew. This is a weird one. This was actually the first jazz thing I ever heard, <laughs> and it is not the album to get you into jazz. Is it great? You betcha, but it's it's artsy. I'm just gonna, it's got two drummers in it. That's all I'll say. I mean, you know, check it out. Ah, it's just fun to have Miley on vinyl, man. What a groove. Electric Light Orchestra, just infuriatingly catchy tunes with just that vocoder vibe to them. All right, this is actually one of my parents's. Like, this is actually from the 80s. 
And you know, I just want old Aussie. It's gross. Another album I don't remember last time I've sat all the way through. Just, you know, there's a lot of music out there, so that's brand new, ready to go. Red on Chili Peppers. Ah, oh, Chad Smith, one of my heroes on the drums. More, more rage. You just gotta have the rage. All right, and now these ones are the ones I've picked out from my parents' stash. Like this was my dad's. It's Monty Python live at Drury Lane. I, Monty Python on vinyl. Yes, please. Oh, that, that's another one of mine. That's Muse's Absolution. Alice Cooper's Welcome to My Nightmare. I don't know why this one just really stuck with me. And then the Find It In My Parents Stash, Whoosh, and then, oh, Frank Zappa. I, I have an actual old school pressing of Frank Zappa. That just makes me all, mmm. Rolling Stones, uh, I, I didn't dig that album much. So I was like, just doing it. I Zeppelin! <laughs> I'm a huge John Bonham fan. I've tracked down his original symbols. I mean, you know, not the not the exact ones, but the same year and make and wait. You, you know what I mean? Like the same people who made my symbols made his. That's hard to sell anyway. More Monty Python, like Maiden! I love this album cover. It looks like someone's high school kid did it for him. It's great. Akadaka! And I just, oh, I thought it was more Akadak and now it's Bowie. <laughs> and Hendrix, like, <laughs> that's an album cover. Twilly, 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 wee, wee. Oh, there it is. Yeah, like, back in black, old school pressing. One thing I've noticed is that the old pressings are really thin and flimsy. Like, modern vinyl is real chunky and like, because you know, back then, like, it was just a huge marker for it to get the price down, whereas now it's like a, you know, collector's thing. But there is this Ottoman, which make really good, more vinyl holder guy. Words are hard. Uh, I, put, I only put this in here because I really do want to sit down and listen to this. This is brand new, but uh, you know, it's so chunk. It just takes up so much space, you know, and I'm, I'm waiting for a special day. It's a lot of vinyl. So much Iron Maiden. Yeah, like these are these are falling apart. These are all my, my mum and dad's. War of the Worlds, Kiss. Dad was all about that Kiss. A family library of great music. K kiss, Dad. Kiss. <laughs> oh, me and a friend listened to this once, like you know, best of album. Apparently, it was like a birthday present to my dad or something. It sounds rubbish. Like the quality of the recording suck. <laughs> more, more Kiss. Blondie. Zeppelin. Plick. Chicago. I actually do. I really dig Chicago. Clear, clear water. Deepest purple. Deep Purple, so many compilation ones, and they all sound pretty poor. Babowie. This one, I remember from when I was a kid. Um, yeah, this crazy art cover, like, it's nuts. <laughs> I'm not wild about the album itself, but like, they've just gone full dinosaur, and then just this crazy concept thing. I, I can only imagine this is what Frank would want to be, right? Like just full of quails. So yes, I've been having a blast playing with it and I want to talk about vinyl really, really soon. So you know, yeah, still put the video together. But yeah, there you go. I, I love it. If you're contemplating getting into it, totally do it. Those $260 Audio Technica turntables, I've got one. They, they hold up great. Yeah. So, um, Microphone. So I've been meaning to do a cheap USB mic thing for a while, but so like before we start, we need to qualify cheap. Because for people outside of a hobby, it can seem insane. It's fun when non-drummers see a similar go, oh, how much be expensive? Maybe, I don't know, $150, $200? Yeah, no. Like when people think of cheap, they think like, oh lord, mate, just go down to cashies, mate. Get to, oh no, my hot dog. Just get some of their genuine bootlegs, mate. There you go, mate. There's like high quality mic. So like this one time I was like, oh, it'd be fully sick to have my own like company, hey? Like not like to change the world or nothing, just like for the status to be like, yeah, I've got my own company, hey, and like big business. But like it's pretty hard though, cause I'm pretty sure my dog makes more money than me. Oh, I, it actually wasn't that bad. I don't know what to believe in anymore. You know, people see the price of top end microphones and go, wait, just for the microphone. And it's like, yeah, just for the microphone. They're like an instrument in of themselves. But my channel runs out of a conventionally cheap setup.
My mic is an Audio-Technica AT2020. It's a professional staple, and hey, it's under 150 buck. But that's just for the mic. No stand, no cable, no nothing. So to record to a computer, you need a USB interface. You can get something like a Focusrite, or in my case, I got a small desk, a Yamaha AG06. It has phantom power, which the AT2020 needs. It has multiple inputs, so I can record any old MP3 plays into it if I want to. And it runs off of the USB connection itself, so no all power needed. Worth every dollar he do. And it's just an iPad running GarageBand. <laughs> USB interface is just plug in and go. It's a beautiful thing. I like to use GarageBand because with audio and recording, you have something called compression, which basically makes the quiet parts loud and the loud parts quiet. The adjustment is almost infinite. You can have a little, you can have a lot, and it's different for every application or instrument. I'm not an audio engineer, so I don't know how to set it up right, but I just press the narrator setting in GarageBand and boom, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the best free app on the planet. Even iPhones can do it. So in terms of cost for my setup, you know, taking the iPad out of the equation because you can literally use any old computer for audio, it's so low stress compared to video. But all in, my cheap setup is still quite a few hundred bucks, you know. <laughs> but you guys want proper budget. And I literally simulated like, what if you need a USB mic right now? Well, I literally just drove down to JB Hi-Fi, picked out three of them, and they're all under a hundred bucks. Or well, one hundred if you want to talk real technical. So up first is the Samson Meteor Mic. At a quite nice price at 69 bucks, or 0.69 hunch. On the box, for the price, I immediately looked at this and went, ah, yuck. It's gonna be some big plastic chrome thing. I hate plastic chrome. It's technically a science marvel, but I think it feels and looks like junk sometimes. Um, no. This boy is chrome steel and is one of the densest nuggets I've held. Look at these legs, man. Look, it can even lean and tilt. How neat is it? And on the bottom, that is a standard microphone thread. So you can stick this on any microphone stand and you can get them for like 25 bucks. I mean, they suck, please get a good one, but you could get one for 25 bucks. Mini USB. Yes, of course it came with a cable, just to add to the 300 billion I now have. And so you're probably looking at this going, well, what's the big deal? So it's just like a cheap microphone, right? So instead of 150 bucks, it's like 69, and then you plug this into your interface. Uh, no. This has a built-in USB interface. That's what the mini USB is for. <laughs> so yeah, this is just an all-in-one guy. Bang, plug, yell. The headphone jack on the back is so you can monitor your own recording as you're recording. Uh, yeah, this isn't to adjust the volume of your recording, that's to adjust the volume of the headphones. Yeah, yeah, you have to actually go into settings to adjust that sort of stuff. Which is one of the benefits of having a desk, is I can just immediately do it. But hey mate, this boy be cheap. And uh, yeah, it's a microphone, so you know, I gotta yell into it. So like, I actually managed to score a loan, mate, for my business. Like, I actually found someone who loaned me money, and it's like super kind of them, they actually believe in me, mate. I'm not gonna let them down, and like, I've loaned money, it's from my dog, mate. I told you, he's got more money than me. So there is the slightest little bit of USB noise going on. It's really subtle and it's just something that you gotta deal with sometimes with USB recording. I've had some desks do it as well. But hey, I think it sounds great. Even better, I have not been fair in any of these recordings that you're gonna be hearing. I literally just pulled it out the box, plugged it into my MacBook, opened voice memos, not even GarageBand, and then I laid on the couch in my lounge room and just talked. Like a big echoey lounge room. If they can handle my crappy room, man, they can handle anything. Oh, and party piece. Look at that. It is so robust. You could just chuck that in your bag and just take it with you everywhere. No battery needed, USB in, off you go. We'll yell more at this guy later. Let's move on to the next budget boy. So for 0.89 hunch, mate, we got the Thron Max Pulse. Now looking at this box, I thought it was just gonna be I don't know, like a little dingus guy that just sits almost like like a laptop accessory or something. No way, it's a big boy. <laughs> this is proper, like desktop sized. USB-C. Yeah, baby, thank you. Really good length on it, you know, it's for a desktop setup. Um, it's very modern gamer looking. It's metal too. Nice tripod, all adjustable. You can angle this dangle how you, or however you want it for angle. I'm just making up words, but fun little touch. It is lighting. <laughs> you know, if you're doing streaming and this helps out your aesthetic, then awesome. You know, it's, it's at the back where, you know, the streaming camera's gonna be seeing it. And also I get it, it's just fun. It's nice to sit in the room that looks cool and that you wanna sit in it and having nice, nice beautiful lighting everywhere that all fits in. You know, I'm a fan. And when you're mute, 
it do the, the red. So like, I finally put together my business strategy to show to my new donor, like who's my dog, it was like, I told you, she makes more money than me, eh? But like, I put all together, mate, it all came to me in a dream, I went, mate, no one's done this before, mate, yeah, you're gonna have to sit down, this is revolutionary. Like, what if people just show up to my house, mate, and like, just give me all their money? And like, because then like, there's no product to make, or to like, to maintain, and there's no like, boxes and marketing, mate. Like, it's literally just free money, why hasn't someone thought of it? And so like, I pitched it to her, hey, and like, she bit me. Yep. It's a mic. It's picking up more of the room with its like echoey reflective walls and things, but it's still nice and clear. Haven't used any compression or any like special tricks yet. Just smash through macOS voice memos. But here's the extra thing. This guy is claiming noise cancellation. And hey, we all hate the guy who's gaming online with the fan blowing on them. And it's just going So, you know, I had to put a fan right up against this mic, mate, and have a quick play with the settings. So like I'm standing outside on a windy day, hey, cause like open up the door, mate, like to go and do a poo, cause I don't have a toilet. And like my donor's just legged it, mate. Like she's just gone straight out the door, hey. Like I don't get it, mate. Like I give her all this love and attention and like only pressure her to invest in my terrible company every five minutes. Not a big deal. And like mate, I've just opened up the door and she's gone. The company's destroyed, mate. Hang on, I'm gonna sit in the car for a minute. Why? Is anyone gonna like donate me like two dollars that I found under the couch and like pushed in front of my dog and just pretended that like she's the donor? Oh no, I've lost the two dollars. Yeah, it loses a lot of volume. I, obviously, you wouldn't be switching between them like that, you know, if you were actually using it, it'd be one way or the other. And so, like, you just bump up the gain to compensate. Uh, when I turn up the volume myself to listen to it, you can hear it's pretty grainy and artifacty, but it did take the fan out. Hey, look, if you're doing some sort of hectic compound raid in Rust, and it's just people yelling constantly and you just got to be audible yeah, There it is. It's like for the money. It was already a neat microphone You know the fact that it comes with everything you need just to plug in and get going the noise cancelling attempt Was just a happy little bonus whether you use it or not. Although that said uh, the volume wheel is goobage It just feels like it's doing nothing. Give me the Samson nugget wheel any day Yeah, and this wheel talks over USB So it's actually sending signals to the computer that changed the volume there <laughs> But when I first plugged this in like the headphones nearly blew my head off with my own voice like, And it, this wouldn't do anything and had to be in preferences to make it do the right thing so maybe that works better for streamers who need like that usb control for stuff i, I don't know so the last one is the daddy it's the blue snowball this thing has been out since 2005 i mean it is proof that like in audio if it is good it stays good hd 600s are from 1997 my favorite headphones my stacks are from like 1981 good is good but these are kind of feeling their age now <laughs> because look at this no headphone out to monitor your sound you this guy has it. The Nugget mic has it. It's just a fugly old mini USB. This guy's allowed to have it because it's 0.69 hunch. This guy's like 20 bucks more and you get the USB-C. But this guy was 97. This is the most expensive one. And it has the least features. So like my dog finally came back, mate, which is super sick. Hey, turns out she went to the bank, mate, to get the two bucks out because she safely deposited it for me, which is amazing. But like, developing story, mate, like, I don't have a dog. Like, it turns out I'm just so cooked, mate, I forgot it's my little cousin. Mate, anything under waist high is just a dog to me, mate. And no, she still won't invest in the company. It sounds great, but it is the most expensive. I mean, the tripod's good, but this here is noisy. Oh. Oh, oh, that was crunchy. Yeah, that feels like crap, man. The thing is, you know, like, everyone's kind of caught up, you know? Like, audio has had a huge advantage over video. I mean, the bootlegs, they were... Perfectly serviceable. I wouldn't record a voiceover for a feature film on these, but you could ring your nan and she could understand you. You know, for less money, you can have lighting, USB-C, and output monitoring. And like height-wise, like it still sits on a desk just as much. This guy be a nugget. But there is another element to these microphones, right? Being budget equipment, these guys kind of have a little bit of a responsibility because these could be the spark to the kindling of a passion, hobby, and or future career. My first video recorder was a Zoom one to record me playing the drums like 10 years ago for my first goes at YouTubing. Those devices were the spark that got me to, to where I am. But what I'm getting to is like the documentation that comes with these to help you use them because like recording voices and audio, you know, you need degrees with that stuff to do it professionally. Like the 
the pulse it's roadmap style my favorite i mean it just says you know plug it in yeah, i i can't read this guys like you couldn't have picked the worst <laughs> it's impossible to read uh, all this is telling you is basically it's selling you the thing again you know volume up and down usb-c basic instructions on how to like find it which is cool i mean that is how you find it and then on the back it's basically the exact same thing <laughs> Only it's Windies. Um, and that's really it. I mean, it's just to tell you how to just plug it in and start yelling. <laughs> Worse is the blue. Yeah, you know, congratulations on your purchase. You know, the fastest, easiest way to get high quality. It's like they're selling it to you after you've bought it. Don't do that. Plug it in the computer. Audacity, garage band, you. Yeah. Gives you this technical readout, which is dumb because then it just sells it to you even more. You know, impress your podcast subscribers and take your Twitch channel to the professional level and you know, capture high quality audio. It's like they're telling you nothing, nothing on how to make those sound good. And then boom, you're done. Next language. Like, that's it. That's all they give you. All of this, crap. Look at that, same thing again. Yeah, thanks for the technical readout, which doesn't mean anything to anyone. Do you want to see the masterclass in manuals? Oh my gosh, mate, it's the little dingus metal nugget. Old mate Samson, yeah, you ready? Introduction, blah, 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 blah. Look, it sells it to you a little bit. You know what the boy's all about? What's inside of it? Yeah. The basics, connecting to a computer, like a quick start guide, but then, Recording techniques and recording techniques for your microphone. <laughs> That's why this paperwork's so important. Each one of these is picking up slightly different stuff from slightly different distances. What does your mic need? Vocals, acoustic guitar, piano, explaining proximity effect, recording a full band. Oh, look, it's giving you that information too. And little details like this. Yeah, number two, windscreen. Dual stage grill protects the capsule and helps reduce wind noise and P popping that little explanation of popping just to, you know popping is where it's like p p and it peeks out the mic this thing's a pop filter a really cheap one so little touches like that that is a fantastic manual the blue one really disappoints me because the yeti came with a good manual so you guys know what a good manual is like you've just kind of he just kind of parked it, I suppose. Like, people just buying it because it's so well known. But, oh man, that Bubby Samson. So, in conclusion, the Blue is a great mic. If you go on one of these, you've got a great mic. But at this price point, like, having a few little extra features is just really worth it because cheap microphones have caught up. Because, like, if you wanted something, like, more hardcore, you could get their Blue Yeti. Or... Audio Technica make USB AT 2020s. So yeah, like th the next stage up isn't that far away. <laughs> this mic works great and it's got way more features if you want like a desktop guy. But I gotta say, as a versatile all rounder, if you need a microphone like to carry around with you, I I love that. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> I've stolen your legs. I've become far stronger than you could have ever imagined. New, 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 new. It looks like a spaceship launch pad now. <laughs> but how cheap and how well built it is and that fantastic manual it comes with as like a first start to like recording audio and whatnot. Gosh, and they make like really great cheap open backs as well. How dare they? Maybe it's my dongle causing the USB noise. I don't know. It's still a great little cheap lad. It even comes with an egg bag. Amazing. Well. That's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, because my $1 a month I do to videos, since the topic is gaming and like RGBing and whatnot, mate. You know, I, you know I'm gonna take you to the pinnacle of it. We're playing Horses on the GBA. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if this thing works properly. Oh wow, these pook cells are soft. <laughs> oh, thank goodness we can play horses. So, thanks so much, mate. I'll see you all next time. Guys, my dog's got a glitch. Like, its bum's here, but then, like, it, its head's down, like, here. Like, how does that work? Frank, where'd the middle of you go? Hey, it's the After Show. Thanks so much for supporting me. I really appreciate this. You literally make this channel work, and I swear. <laughs> oh, YouTube's so unreliable, I hate them. Are you ready for the pinnacle of gaming? I don't think you're ready. Oh, I'm not hearing people weeping, cause oh, look out! It's horses! Well, I don't think this is gonna be good. <laughs> um, and I think it's brand new. I don't, I don't know, I mean, it looks like... 
I, I don't know. Oh, wow, look at these graphics. Actually, if this is GBA, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Because there's no such thing as too much cute. I don't know, Frank's kind of peeking out the cute scale. Take care of up to six horses. Well, I can't even look after myself. 2007? Oh, I forget that is a long time ago. Nintendo said this is okay, so it must be good. Oh, right, the DS was ahead at this point. That's what I thought. <laughs> Oh, the Manuel. Getting started. Yeah. No, this is blowing all the secrets. Nah, no, it should be intuitive enough that I can jump in and understand Jose's. This is my modded GBA, and I've got it plugged into the desk, and we're gonna see what we get. But Gingo. Uh oh. 2006? What? This modded Game Boy looks great, doesn't it? <laughs> Wait, I can't hear. M oh. I'm sorry if I get the, the volumes all messed up. Oh, wow. It's almost like DMB. Oh, yeah. Get low. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Speed's dank. Oh, Leskoban. Ed Stallion. <laughs> I have to. Oh, jeez, that's piercing. My own horse farm. Visit a town. Build a guest house. Those, those are on two different scales of difficult. Visit a town. I, I could I could crawl to a town, but build a house. Oh God! Look, look at all this stuff. Your big success. Can I skip straight to that? Okay. She's freaking me out, man. She's not looking right. Oh yeah. Oh no. Can I jump? No. I heard a horse! Ed Stallion, there he is! Clean. Wait, but what, what do I do though? What, 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 what do I... Okay, I'm just in the bushes now. The intro did tell me what to do, but I, I just wasn't paying attention. I was getting down to that hard jam. Ooh, a well to jump into. <laughs> oh, there we go! Oh, look at his stats, man! What level is he? I can't brush him. I can't. Let's stroke. You're a god horse. You're a god horse. Man, I'm living the dream right here. Okay, f feed him. Eat up! Food bowl's full. Oh. Treat. I'm gonna spoil on my boy. Treat. Disinfectant. What kind of warped childhood do these developers have? Come and... I need to turn that down. Come and get your disinfectant, kids. You've done good this day. But ma'am, I wanted the eye drops today. <laughs> the beach is out of bounds, Ed. Whoa! Oh, wow. <laughs> Listen to the slap bass. Oh, there we go. Oh. Oh, he can jump! Of course he can, he's Ed Stallion. Yeah! He can even move in diagonals. I mean, is this the game? I, I, no, I, I gotta, I gotta... Am I, am I playing... Hey, hang on a minute. <laughs> Every game has grindy elements and then the really rewarding elements. And I'm just like, is this the rewarding element? Is, is this worth my grind? And the music certainly is. Oh! Jump the fence, Ed! Oh! Come on, Ed! Oh, Ed! Oh! <laughs> wow, check this out! You get Ed up to a sprint, you just go whoop the other way! <laughs> Look at this maneuverability, man! I'm not gonna deny it. This is pretty dull. Come on, Ed, you could jump one stinking thing! Ed's the man! Oh man, I'm so good at this game! Alright, I'm bored of my new skill already. What's the reward? Like, I'm officially lost. I, I, I'm, I'm officially. Oh no, oh no, I've. Damn it.
I'm starting to think this really was brand new. I'm starting to think that, yeah, no one bought this. And I'm wondering why. Um, well, I'm sorry for putting you through that. I, I didn't have any fun at all. I mean, when I jumped the barrel with Ed, Ed Stallion, mate. And, uh, but then after, I mean, I just... <laughs> Come on, Nintendo, that seal means nothing. Well, thanks for supporting me, and, you know, I'll, I'll see you on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I have to hold you guys ransom for the content you actually want, which is fun, goofy stuff, and you bitch, that's what I'd rather be doing too. Well, I'm having some real issues, and, like, ones I only just learned are huge and widespread, and, like, it's been stressing me out this last month, and it's all I can think of. Like, look at these nails! <laughs> been chewing the guts out of them. It's gotten to the point where this is my last ditch attempt at getting it fixed. I've been trying for a month now and like we got to stop this awful trend that's happening on a lot of platforms and that's even outside of streaming content. But I got to sell to you just how much my Twitch stream means to me and how important it is for my future career plans. If you've seen my 1 million dang pods backstory video, you know that I've dedicated my life to playing the drums. It's my ultimate passion. Three music degrees in my pocket and like over 20 years playing experience now and I've always dreamed of doing a drum live stream thing. It's like a gig from my own home. I can't tell you how cool that is. The problem is I could never afford the rig. Like you need so many microphones, a desk, the cameras, heck like hours upon hours of content to learn for people to come and check out. People who watched the 1 million video know that my first project was Dankness, the hot mess Simpsons remix thing. And it was way back in 2018 that I first started streaming on Twitch and it was working on the tracks. It was during that time that Frank Cam was born. Those days, honestly, I was just getting comfortable being in front of a camera. I can't stand looking at my own face. That's why Dank Pods are just my hands. Right at the start of COVID and Dank Pods really taking off, I could finally buy some microphones and I spent all of 2020 practicing the drum streams. I kept it really low key. You had to find it. Like only my awesome core of like 20 odd Dankmas folks were the only ones you know. And most of them are now my moderators this very day. I never really brought up the stream on Dank Pods because like, you know, I'd rather projects grow naturally and that folks are there because that was the content they're looking for. I mean, I know I've announced it recently, but you know, it's good to start with a small audience. So when you make stupid mistakes, you have this super cool group of people to tell you nicely. <laughs> Such simple mistakes, but in the heat of a stream, it's harder than it looks. You sit and talk live on camera, it's scary, yo! I made the Windows 95 desktop myself. Although someone cool made me the current main cam window, I made the rest using an online Windows 95 emulator and took screenshots and then cropped it in Photoshop. Like the intro screen, the end screen, like... So much work. I'm all in on Twitch, yeah. I've been chopping away at the streaming thing for over three years now trying to find a hit. And man, I can't believe I've finally got one. I'm currently ranked in the top 200 on Twitch. Like, what? Learning that if you have 20 viewers at any one time, you're within the top 10%. But then here's me average over 500 currently. Like, I'm basically in the top fraction of a percent, which blows me away. Oh, you see that huge spike in views there? That was a Sunday Arvo that T-Pain raided my stream. Yes, T-Pain. It's all good. No, we don't have any oh, that's points. who I just I'm passed by too. Oh, I'll What are you doing? This next symbol. <laughs> oh, that's the garbage tree. <laughs> These new balances hidden, boy. Hold on. <laughs> new balances hidden, boy. <laughs> Some bitches wide weed. Yeah. <laughs> Get Eddie. Uh, oh, what? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He's getting raided. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Oh my goodness. Hit him. <laughs> <laughs> He's having such a good time. <laughs> I'm still laughing at the way he threw that symbol across the room. <laughs> Is that what it was? T-Pain's... What?
T Pain is reading me with a party of three thousand three hundred viewers. I don't think he knows. What? That'd be funny if he Well, Joe, I know. better do something important. Heads up! <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, J- Appreciate it, oh, B man. <laughs> man. Now I better play something like <sighs> not crap and like not a man. <laughs> A totally not a waste of people's time. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what the fuck? Honestly, I was speechless and like, that's not real. Oh gosh, what if it is T-Pain? And it was, and you just gotta keep rolling. You know, the dude came to watch me play, so I'd better play. You thought I wouldn't know who he was? I Damn right I know who you are, man. I had your phone app back in 2010. It was nuts, and but they were a super cool group of folks too. Like, thanks for the cool Sunday tea. Dude games, no wonder why his group is so awesome. He even subscribed. And he threw heat at my New Balance shoes. <laughs> Whatever, mate. No wonder why dads wear these things, mate. I'm in comfort heaven. But did you know the drum stream is the main point to me renting the warehouse? It's so I can stream at different hours and not upset anyone. But hey, I've made it. My content making dreams coming alive to have diverse projects with nothing in common thriving on separate platforms. Oh, peace at last. Maybe I finally found a reliable living where I'm doing what I want. Well, in October, Twitch had one of the largest data leaks we've seen. Like an absolutely massively offensively sized one. And October was the last month I got paid for. Well, I went to check my PayPal as it's been extremely exciting earning money as a musician doing my own projects. The same giggle I get out of Dankmas, uh, but no, I, I didn't get paid. Uh, okay, I need to update it. Maybe it's to do with that huge data leak. You know, we all had to reset our stream keys and such. Wait, I can't even update basic information now? I I gotta contact support. And that's when I learned how hands-off Twitch is right now. The first dude you get is some robot auto reply, basically making sure you're not just an idiot and that's why it's not working. But have you tried turning it off and on? But if you need help, just reply. Then they ask for your IP address and receipt numbers that aren't to do with PayPal. It's the messiest way to verify my identity that I've ever seen. But after literally weeks, I finally get this. I got it, stream. Thank you for your response. This is our goal to provide us safe and secure <laughs> experience for our content creators and communities. This includes monitoring transactions on our service to prevent fraudulent activity. One or more transactions associated with your account was flagged as fraudulent. Specifically, your account was flagged as having recently received an unauthorized transfer of bits. We cannot reinstate this portion of the pay. And then like, that's it. Then like, nothing to do with how to update my details, or any actual follow-up steps to make, or not even any proof that I'd done anything wrong. I just played drums and memes. This is what I play along to. This is what I replied with, and you betcha I never got a response. But I actually had to update my details. Some were out of date from ages ago, but no, I couldn't change them. I had to contact support again. So I just pretended that I never messaged them yet. Since it's just lazy bots anyway, I just said like, need to update my details and have to contact support. This is the email I get. Basically just going, we know you appealed your payment block, but we already told you in the previous one. Yes, that one telling me that I fraudulent bit payments with no evidence until actual steps to remedy it. You can appeal this in 30 days. It's like, wait, no, no. I asked to update my personal details. Look at the header. I didn't even bring this up. It just, it just spits out whatever it wants. I was still optimistic at this stage and hoped that it was just some freak bug. Never mind being very offended by literally the non-existent support at this stage. Uh, and then I learned that this has been an issue for people since like 2019. Like literally the exact same issue. And then same non-action from Twitch. I'm too invested in Twitch to walk out. So I put my clown makeup on and double down and jumped to make a partner. I'm only at the affiliate level and reading the fine print for partner. Wow, actual support.
porn, the dystopian nightmare. Just be part of the top fraction of a percent and we might acknowledge your existence for help. Luckily, I handily met the requirements for partner. I streamed four unique days. They were looking for 70 odd viewers a stream. I'm pulling hundreds. I don't do long streams, but they're really high powered. Like time is my enemy. I could only stream so much. And so I make jam packed hour long sets. But because of this, I was eight hours short to apply. So like a madman, I did an eight hour stream out of the blue. Like how else can I show my commitment to the platform. All right, so I can finally apply and it's a proper application with sections for me to elaborate and plead why I'm worthy. You know, a big thing they ask is, do you have a big outside following? So I paired and synced the 1 million sub dank pods channel. Like they give you a spot to type. So I explained like, you know, how like a lot of my views come from dank pods and like I explained garbage time, how I'm gonna sync the two together. It's all gonna be melded into one. Shared that I wanted to commit to the platform and stream for at least the next 10 years if not forever. I poured my heart into that application, sent it off, and a few days later I got this. I was kicked back, even with my big outside audience feeding the stream. The fact that I've been on the platform chipping away for years waiting for a hit. The hundreds of current regular viewers. Like, I've got this huge inside joke and emoji community stuff. Apparently, I need to be more regular and stream at least three unique days. But I stream four. I made sure to stress in the application that I only do one hour streams as I technically run three YouTube channels, a full time Twitch and a huge patron. Just the patron alone takes hours out of me. And they even said they have allowances in these kinds of circumstances. But no, I can only assume it's just another robot reply because if I look up my own stream data, right? <laughs> Is this not regular and consistent enough? The days go up and down a little bit as I juggle time zones and different audiences, but I'm still well within the top 1% on Twitch. Like, robot support networks, man, it's a huge issue that's getting worse. More than ever, huge billion dollar companies are choosing to use lazy, poorly designed bots instead of actually hiring a person to support their services. Like, humans and their problems are complex and nothing is ever black and white, yet computers see ones and zeros. You know, you're all the same, you're all the same, and all of you just get demonetized together. They destroy every platform they grace. And legit, as soon as you see, like, one of those, hi, I'm Dopey the Useless Support Bot, let's get started. Like, on any site, just quit and look for a phone number. Don't waste your precious seconds. You know, my video launching the drum stream playing along to the Wii Sports theme was flagged as violent and graphic. Like, our team looked into this. Like, really, Google, look at that video title. Oh, such a horrible video. Like, that's the bots for you. They exist to save money, so in kind, they're never made to be any good. But these bots can destroy lives. I know that because here in Australia, we had the robo debt crisis. We're the most in need folks who depended on welfare payments were given huge debts to pay and it was like the government's lazy bots handing them out. People literally killed themselves over it. They were already roughing it and that was all it took to just push them over the edge. It just wasn't worth it anymore. I depend on these content platforms as my whole career right now is as a content creator. And to know how awful lazy support bots can be, it offends me to see Twitch adopting the same thing. And like, you guys know that Amazon owns Twitch, right? Isn't Amazon known for great customer support? Like, they don't have any of those resources they can offer? Like, honestly, this whole thing isn't even about getting paid anymore. It's knowing that if something goes wrong, you can fix it. Like, this is my livelihood. Like, imagine if my account got compromised, like in a data leak or something. But right now, I can't even casually update my details, even after three attempts at contacting support. The internet moves quick when something gets breached, right? And here I am waiting weeks for a bot reply. I have no confidence on this platform. It is so dodgy. I'm so thankful that I anticipated getting stung one day by a major platform. Didn't think it was gonna be Twitch, to be honest. It's why as soon as I learned how to edit Dank Pods episodes faster, I could make two of them a week and use that to make the extra videos to earn the Patreon following I have as a parachute. And gosh, do they save the day. It's hard work making the extra videos and putting time into like supporting the platform, but you folks really do make all this work. But most aren't that fortunate and streaming is their sole income. But it's still weaking me out. So I've hired family now. I, I own a business with employees. I'm trying to hire one of my old mates to help me with garbage time videos. But if I don't know what I'm getting paid for, it's hard to make plans. It's, it's so gutting as the 
the drum stream was actually paying rent at the warehouse. And I was like super proud of that. I even reached out over Twitter guys, emerging from my social media coma, just looking for a direction to take, not even asking for immediate action. Just what, what do I do? Nothing. No reply. Oh, but then the next day they tweet this nonsense out and the comments are filled with people not only having payment issues, but literally the exact same ones I am. None of them get any replies. Oh, but if you post some cutesy fluffy stuff, boom, they'll respond. Hey, uh, Twitch, sh 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 come here. You know how awful it looks to show that you are actually there, but you will only reply to non-issue related stuff. Or you can message them, but you get another useless bot. This stresses me out as my content making strategy, like the drum stream was meant to be the regular turnkey thing. It's what I've spent my life practicing. I love geeking about drums. I could talk about it forever. I've got all these vintage drum stuff I want to put on there and collaborate it with my Garbage Time YouTube channel. But Twitch is a mess right now. I want to leave so bad and absolutely it makes me think poorly of Amazon. <laughs> I, I've even canceled all my subscription with them. I'm just so embittered by it. And like, look at me, I've turned into the person I've hated. I, I just want to have fun on the internet and leave the drama to others. But no, instead I've been ranting and complaining in my streams about this and it spoils it. My last stream I only got 30 minutes in before I just had to call it because I, I just saw myself on the screen and I'm this miserable lump sitting on camera and you know, no one wants that. It's just so deflating to be cheaply rolled by a billion dollar company. Even now I hate that I've had to make this video. This isn't fun at all. What a lame week at work I've had just brewing and stewing about this and it's because I've been a small creator for longer than I've been a big one and I see small creators dealing with this too and like I have to air this out it's, it feels like my responsibility to stand with them and go yo don't feel bad I'm in the top fraction of percent with a 1 million followership I can't get twitch support either so like twitch can, can you like email me mate this isn't a big, I'm being serious, can we fix this? I don't even want to be made partner. I'm happy plodding along at my own pace. I only jumped for it because I was desperate to get some kind of basic support. eBay is a garbage pile, but even they have chat support. My Twitch issue is a five minute fix over the phone. I've even had to take a week off from the drum stream. I'm no fun right now. It's gonna kill the thing that I've worked so hard to work on as I just mope around. And I've actually seen views steadily like drop. And that's when I've been whinging about this. People come for fun, not to hear some loser mope over a drum kit so i gotta cool off and think about what i'm gonna do because i'm not confident i'm gonna hear back from twitch people say to stream on youtube but it's like this project dank pods is perfect for youtube like it all fits fine and my drum stream is perfect for twitch i designed it specifically for it playing along to music on youtube is a nightmare it's too prickly with content matching twitch still has content precautions but they just blank out the sections in the vod and let it roll on it's far more casual and usually my drums over the top skirt those bots no worries so like twitch like you gotta fix this mate like these are the first steps to the end of a platform you know like, your name's already mud for a lot of folks with how much you take from streamers the toxic bot raids not to mention one of the worst data leaks ever seen and like we know a whole bunch of big streamers are legging it to youtube mate and, like if nothing changes then the end's already begun soon enough it's gonna be us middle benches are gonna be holding up the columns and if this ain't fixed asap mate then we're gone too it needs to be fixed content creators can't afford to lose another platform microsoft bought mixer and mixer's gone the only other alternatives are gonna be YouTube and Facebook gaming. Competition is a good thing. As soon as the competition goes away, it just gets cooked. It's so depressing that even being part of the top fraction of a percent on a platform that they can't even give you the courtesy of an email. And I don't want to leave the community I've started. So if anyone's wondering what's happened with the drum streams, well I'm gonna simp up and keep doing them because I want to play the drums live on stream with as little issues as possible. I'll probably never get paid on YouTube doing it, so I've got to pick the lesser of the two evils and just not get paid on the less fussy platform. Yay. Well, that's it. I'm sure you're glad it's over. Big whinge fest. Huge thanks to my patrons. I make all my financial decisions based on you guys alone. If I can't afford it with my patrons, I bow out. It's because you're so reliable and I can depend on you. Well, for $1 a month, I do extra videos and I'm going to show you my drum stream. Yep, it's sitting idle as I take a week off. I'm sorry about that, I'm just a pit of gloom right now. But see this hot mess up close and all the stinking work I've put into it. So, thanks so much, mate. I'll see you next time for hopefully something fun. If you're, you're wondering what Frank gets up to during the day, well, this is kind of it. Like, this is as active as you'll ever see Frank. And she just does circles and licks things and escapes. Oh no, we're all doomed.
No, Frank, don't look to plant. No, Frank, don't look to. I, I told you. Hey, it's the after show. Well, thanks for supporting me. You helped me ride out the bumps of billion dollar businesses that don't feel like doing the right thing. Look, it's the drum stream I've worked so hard to achieve. <laughs> so, yeah, here's the rig. Look at this bespoke thing that I've set up just for this. Uh, that's where the Frank cam happens over there. Uh, this is just a cheapy telly on a cheapy stand, which I think I bought from Amazon. Boo! Uh, my old laptop, which is now so hilariously out of date. Well done, Intel. Way to get overtaken by Apple. <laughs> Man, the new MacBooks are amazing. And these drums here. So the drums themselves, these are just Pearl exports. You can pick these up for like, you know, students use these, schools use these. I really do want to sell that. Y you don't need expensive drums. I put these awesome Evans hydraulics on it. It's like the 80s. It's because honestly, the big part of the stream is just to beat the pants out of a drum kit. And these are the, like the most heaviest drum heads you can get and like you can just wail hard. Uh, maple free floater snare. I like piccolos. I'm a fan. Piccolo means, you know, small, thin, pancake snare. Symbol wise, I'm also selling a bit of the, the same vibe. I've owned these for well over six years. A, like crash symbol top and like some random beginner on the bottom with a <laughs> chunk missing i've honestly been using them for six years i put them together as a joke and fell in love with them and the cracks never gotten bigger uh, i got this for 20 bucks off an old mate it's cracked to oblivion um this is like usually i put any old symbol here like because in this bag this is the good boy bag like, this is where all the all like 1940s i think that's a canadian zildjian <laughs> Yeah, like some so it's fun to put awesome vintage symbols up there because man do I love vintage like drums and things. See, so, yeah, that's a 1970s pang. The the car bells. This is a beginner symbol. This is a Zildjian S. This is one of their cheaper ones. Um the big thin ones I think sound really good. 20, that's a big crash. Um yeah, and I, like it's actually it's actually really nice and I enjoy wailing on it. This is called a trash former. It's meant to look like an idiot, it's like an effects guy. And then uh, this is the Oriental Crash of Doom. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, look at it. It's all wavy and crazy looking. It's got holes drilled in it. Uh, you know, proof that, like, you don't need perfect looking symbols to make good sound. I mean, they're cracked, cracked. It's Pang. Yeah, it's a mess on the floor. There's drumstick redmonds everywhere. That is literally a pedal that came with the Pearl Exports. When you see me like doing my fast single kick stuff. That's right. I don't I don't even use an expensive pedal. Although the hi-hat stand is expensive because like I needed the special legs. There's the keyboard for the compute, which is over here. Oh wait. Like, all of this literally runs out of an M1 Mac Mini. 8 gig RAM base model boy. Yeah, like that's how good the, the new <laughs> Apple things are, right? That little boy is running the whole shebango. I've got my giant desk here. What was it Yamaha? MG16XU. Like for a 16 channel USB desk, which is listening to me. Uh, the, these are a great bargain. And look, see like left and right overheads, which is what these are. They're Rhodes mics, Khan Australia. It kicks, no, the toms, that's me. So when you see me muting and unmuting, that's what I'm doing. It, it's hard to look through a viewfinder. That's the iPod, it usually sits about there. Because yes, all of this really is running out of an iPod. <laughs> There it is. Man, like 300 tracks all put into their folders. Yeah, it's it's a lot of stuff. It's taken me a long time to, to get this up there. And yeah, look, it's just a camera. Ta-da! <laughs> that is literally... All the music you're hearing is actually coming out of that 5th gen iPod. Um, this is like a VR racing setup or whatever. And like, yeah, it holds a laptop good and, and my mouse good. <laughs> Look at all that, that's all stick crumbs. All of that are drumstick crumbs. And for those of you who have seen the stream, yep, here they are. These are the, I mean, <laughs> this is the Ajax. Like, <laughs> it used to look okay. Now it doesn't look okay. Mate, it's the crut. <laughs> <laughs> Budget symbol from the 60s. I'll try, like, you know, beautiful symbols are made in Turkey. And they'll try to be clever. Oh, it's spelled Turk backwards and they got crud. And yeah, they didn't, they didn't keep that name for long. 
But yeah, all of these just get thrown at the door, basically. But this is where they live. If you wonder what they're sitting in, it's actually a guitar stand. They really hold cymbals good. Look at the rat's nest of cabling going on. Like, this stream took so long to put together. Like, there's just wires hanging everywhere. But yeah, you know, now I'll wait to see if Twitch is deciding to actually offer support or if they're wrapping up. That's how I got a call. It's like, well, either you support your people or you're finished, right? That, like, you're just going to close up. I'm way too invested. This is something I've always wanted to do. And so, yeah, so... Sorry about the miserable video and just being deflated and just not so not so hot at the moment. And um and and yeah. Bye. What extra frank because thank. This week's video sucked Frank smells. Frank's bum, which is here, like she's everywhere. Like she's long lady. Yeah, these week's video stunk smelly butts. So I wanna do something fun and wholesome, like I always wanna do. Drama's never fun, but the small creator in me was bubbling out, just going like, <laughs> you know, just support the platform properly. You know, I probably will end up just going to another platform. Yes, I've spoken to Luke at Floatplane. We spoke for five hours. <laughs> it was great. Floatplane is amazing, that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, but I'm actually hoping on doing a podcast there. Big, big time spoilers. You know, I won't be, you know, announcing anything for ages though. You know, I don't want to keep sounding overly righteous or anything when I keep saying, you know, it's all thanks to you guys. But it is, because you know, I do make my financial decisions based on you guys. Like, I turn off mid-roll and after ads, but man, full transparency, I've got to say, now after doing it for two years with so many YouTube videos with just that one ad at the beginning, it adds up. It's a, like, pfft, wow. So like, you know, I'm being well supported at this moment. You know, the only issue is I just can't feel I can depend on it. So, you know, the warehouse, the stuff that I'm buying, the people I'm hiring, you know, my mum works for me and she's nailing it, right? She was actually a business manager and to have a professional helping me out, it's like, oh wow, I, <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. And spoilers, I'm trying to hire my best mate James on for a couple of days so we can dedicate to garbage time. Like, you wanna see that nugget card run it? We just so do I. We're working on it this Sunday. <laughs> All those videos happen on weekends. I haven't had days off in ages. But it's extra frank because the thank is extra frank. We're gonna open the door. Door. Come on. Oh, it's sticky. Oh, it's humid and the door. Now, Frank is unresponsive at best. <laughs> oh, that's snooter. So, watch this. I'm just gonna go tap it, tap, tap, tap it. See what she does. <laughs> she's a she's a heavy sleeper this one like this come on frank come on frank all right like a tip for snakes they don't like being touched near their head or their tail like yeah they they, they don't like boops but i'm gonna i'm gonna touch her somewhere in the middle and you you watch her reaction three two one franklin touching engaged oh oh frank oh that's really sweet oh no Look at the look at the monster now. That's not in focus. So there we are. <laughs> I, no panic or anything. Hang on, I gotta stop so I can zoom in. <laughs> Three, two, one. Franklin touching again. There you go. That's that's Frank. She, she just wants to see what was touching. She's just like, oh, it's that guy again. How dare. Well, I'm gonna be more brave. I'm gonna to touch up closer. Now that Frank's wiggling, here we go. <laughs> Let the games begin. It's me, Frank. Hello. Don't taste it. <gasps> what was that? What What are you telling me? What What did you taste that you didn't like, Frank? That's offensive. That's a. You're gonna move away now, aren't you? Just got offended by Frank. Like, fr like what What was wrong? <laughs> I don't know if you can notice that she's not going anywhere. Oh, wait, she's going, she's going somewhere. Oh. Frank, why do you, I, you are listening, aren't you? You've made me a liar. You wait for me to say things and the, oh, look at this, everyone. Frank's going. All right, now I'm gonna take control. Frank's going to a house, which has, <laughs> there you go, stream peeps. Here's Frank Cam, flop, the, it sits like this. There, here she comes. Here comes that nasty witch. Here comes that nasty witch. 
you, you go straight to bed now, aren't you? It's like, oh, great, I'm being touched. I don't want to be touched. <laughs> but I love how chill she does it. Like, there was no huffing, no puffing. It was just the most passive-aggressive, like, well, I'll just go somewhere where you're not going to touch me. If Frank, it's up here. You see that stain? That's where she gets in her water over there and then jumps on through. Frank, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, look at this. Look at Frank being smart. And yeah. Well, I nailed it. Didn't I just nail it? As soon as she moved her head from here, I went, she's going to her house. Boom. Look, here's a trick to make her move faster. She's got this. You just give her love. And look, see, the speed picks up. <laughs> she's repelled by love. Frank, you are literally a monster. Look how far she's going now. <laughs> yeah, look at all this Frank I can touch though, hey? Eh? Yeah, she doesn't like tippy tip. Oh, <laughs> Frank! Oh, you're so antisocial, you witch. And there you go, there's Frank. She's fine. She's just antisocial. There you go. Well, let's let Frank be a Cinnabon in peace. <laughs> Man, the way she whipped her tail, she was like, get out, get out. No hissing or nothing. Just, just uh, get out of it. Well, there you go. There's, it, wow, Frank actually finished the job. Go Frank. She was determined to get away. Well, there you go. The extra Frank because thank, and, and once more, Thank. Things made for children. <laughs> Kids can get stuffed. I'd have this today. Look how handsomely it's yellowed. <laughs> I'd let that devalue in my home. But uh, yeah, things made for kids. Like, kids shows are just a fever dream. <laughs> that's, that's all they are. For kids, this is entertaining. For adults, this is terrifying. And like, baby food? Who picks these flavors? And then I see kids' headphones. And my curiosity is peaked. Like, I just gotta know, like, what do children's headphones sound like? So first up in this hot mess, it, it's like straight up, this is my favorite name out of all of them. Like, it's over. It's, it's, it's the Rock Papas. And whoa, actually, I haven't had it on the iPad yet. Look how it blends in. Well, there's proof of the name, Rock Papa. And look, it's got this guy that looks like a child, but also a 35 year old disco goer. I, I don't know how they got it all in there, but they did. Something they stayed on the get, get out of it. It's compatible with iPod. <laughs> but then also iPhone 3GS. I, I'm starting to think that they've been selling these for a long time. There's no date anywhere. Oh, there's a manual. I, oh, it's less of a manual than more of a thank you leaflet. Uh, but it's this bit here, size adjustment made to fit everyone. And um, yeah, these, these are basically just regular headphones that adjust down really far for little heads. My ears actually fit in these, they're like, you know, they're proper size. On a seven year old, they'd just be huge. <laughs> Cable's good, you know, kids are gonna be tugging on that. But mate, the actual thing I'm interested in Sound. And you know, mate, we gotta compare it to the, the Herder 600s by old mate Senny. I forgot to bring them here, I'm sorry. And we've got the freakish ears on a stand. You know, you are listening through your headphones or smart fridge, by the way, so... <laughs> it's just a fun comparison. surprised me because I thought, you know, like kids have really sensitive ears. Like whenever I'm playing a gig and there's kids there, adults are happily chatting and kids are just blocking their ears. And I don't blame them. Like, yeah, kids ears are really, really sensitive. So I thought they'd have less top end because that's kind of the, the sharp bitey bit. But no, <laughs> these have extra treble. Basically just conventional cheap boy headphones that just adjust down further because these do fit on my head. There is another test for these guys, but we'll do it in a little bit. So we're leaving the sweet warm embrace of cabled headphones. Bring back the headphone jack. But Bluetooth land, mate, these are the Zamcols. The ZH100. Safe and healthy sound. It's like strained carrots for your ears. It's 
probably why they're orange. Safe volume, we'll get to that. Healthy sound, again, it's carrots for your ears. Ultra portable, I guess. Comes with a big egg bag, the, the cable I don't need, and the manual. Like, this is, this is good. You know, this is absorbent, so all the, the fluids that get onto this can soak into this and then um, stink out your car later. Um, <laughs> very utilitarian manual. And then I realized, like, you know, mum and dad are going to be reading this and then, like, show their kid how to do it. But, um, yeah, it's just very, very whatever. I mean, pfft, it came with a manual. That's amazing nowadays. And there, that's, that's, oops. I hope I don't need, it's all right. <laughs> English ends here. This is all you need. So, like... These were about 60 odd bucks. That's, that's proper money. I mean, I like how they look. I actually like these wild colors. <laughs> look, they do the fold guy thing. They go in the bag. Pretty good. These actually comfortably fit my head as well. That means they're good for fat kids. Um, and I don't hate how they're made. Uh, there's no swivel to the ear cups though, which is a bit of an issue because like our ears point forwards, right? They're not pointing out this way. So a bit of angle is what you want. So the rock papas have like the swivel, you know, so it matches your greasy head. Yeah, and these don't, like they got the angle pretty good. Like if I shift it on my head, it gets more comfortable, but yeah. Very cheap buttons, the volume lock button and yeah, Micro USB. For the price, it's kind of like, uh, can we get rid of that already? Wow, the, these be thin, man. You know, they're made for kids, really little kids. And so I had to bump up the volume after the fact. At maximum volume, it wasn't even up to where like the ears are normally recording. <laughs> These are really, really quiet. But that that is a good thing, because that's what kids are gonna do. You give them a volume knob and they'll just go to try it out. And yeah, like kids' ears are super, super sensitive. They're like safety headphones. That's a lot of money. <laughs> oh my puck cells. So the fact that I don't have any moving bits for the most part might be a good thing for the test coming up, right? So we'll see these guys again soon. Right, so these ones. Totally original color scheme, never seen it before. Like, be whoa. <laughs> it's ever so darker, but so is the blue. If you're a content creator and you see what your stuff looks like on your workstation, then you put it on your like your high dynamic TV. It's kind of like that. These are the JR300BTs. Look at this. Oh, like stickers are fun. So you can spell your name or rude words like incontinent. Yeah, it's it's actually really cute. L little emoji ones as well. Like the illustrations vibing of like, yeah, stick them on your headphones. Nah, mate, these are going on the inside of the car window. <laughs> and, and in no like planned pattern or anything, just as it fits. Really nice little touch. Uh, these are about 50 buck. You know, so they're cheaper than the last guys, but that, that's still proper headphone money. <laughs> These have really stripped back controls. They actually hide the micro USB. They're on ear, which I traditionally hate. But then look at these all touches. Look at the little music notes for the size. JBL with the little details. I like the font as well. It's cute. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Very serious looking now. <laughs> cute matching cable, but is also one of the shortest things I've ever seen. Yeah, business. Um... <laughs> Again, I'm guessing mum's gonna be reading this. I mean, dad will be offering emotional support from the couch. He's still there, he's a team player. Yeah, typical whatevers. <laughs> it's just like this, ugh. And then like, and should I be alarmed? Like, oh, FCC statement. It's just guff and Oh, look, it's still coming. Oh, Joy's my favorite. Warranty card. Is this a warranty card, huh? I need business cards this big. Hey, hire me to take your tree stumps down. Great. Let's hear them already. Out of the bunch, they're the best. 
But that bass is weird sounding. <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, they, they sound more like actual headphones, huh? But I, they don't feel like they're built crazy hardcore or like they're like extra waterproof or anything. They just feel like cheap headphones. Like, right, there's, there's one more set of headphones, but it just didn't work out right. I wanted two representatives for the keyboard headphones because bring back the headphone jack. Right, and I bought these frog phones. I can't even find them for sale anymore. And it, it doesn't matter, right, because these ones didn't fit my head at all. These really are made for children. They are strange. <laughs> I, wow, they're so odd, they wouldn't fit on the ears to record them, and they are the quietest by far. So, I think these are a perfect example to show you just how many dB are knocked out of these for kids. Unfortunately, we need a comparison as well. Oh, rock papa, to me you are so wonderful. Nah, they're actually... <laughs> Actually pretty stinking average. These don't have any volume taken out of them. And so, you know, to prove it to you. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, Rock Papa. It's just how it worked out, mate. <laughs> There's quite a few DB knocked out of them. And look at that. They both shrugged off the Diablo. Oh my gosh, mate, this has a microphone in it. So like this one time, I was reminiscing on my childhood stories, mate. It's dumb stuff that I used to do as a kid that I don't do anymore because I'm like growing up, hey. Like, you know, trying to do a triple backflip off of dad's shed, hey. And like landing on my neck and getting all messed up. <laughs> mate, no, no way, that was only 10 minutes ago. I'm really delirious, mate. Can I have an ambulance? <laughs> Dude, I this one has one too. So like this one time, I'm like laying on the driveway all messed up from trying to do like a whatever man, stinking backflip thing off of dad's whatever's, mate. And I'm like, I'm losing all my fluids now, mate. I can't even think. And I'm like, I don't even know how to start this recording. As, oh, there's an ambulance. No, no, the ambulance is for someone else. What? All right, I've gotten my worth out of these. It's time for the test. It's called the tantrum test. Will these survive? I mean, I don't care about the frog ones, but will they survive a man-child session here on the floor? So maybe not having as many hinges is gonna really help out because, I mean, that looks complicated. And it's like, well, only one way to find out. I said I wanted plum liqueur with my Ferrero Rochers. It's not a Ferrero Rocher, it's a plum liqueur. Those wheels aren't JDM. They can't be seen on my vintage Honda. How dare you even think of making it? No, it's not of the times, mate. It's not JDM at all. Where's my Chenomite scrolls? You said there'd be Chenomite scrolls, and there's none here. I said I want them right now. <laughs> I hate frogs. I don't even appreciate the frogs at all. I might have gone a little bit hard there, but the JBLs held up. I mean, <laughs> that was full man-child strength right there, okay? That's a little bit more than toddlers would achieve, but, I mean, I've been surprised before. Not bad. The rock papas shrugged it off. Not I mean, <laughs> they feel a little bit loosened up, but it's, it's, it's all ro Oh, okay. Wait, no. Okay, <laughs> this one doesn't adjust properly anymore. <laughs> oh. Um, the, f the, fr <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't look at the dad. <laughs> Oh, um, the, the frog, the frog took it bad, man. He gone. Where is that? Oh, that's a nice knot, that is. Oh, man, unfortunately. <laughs> I got, got him good. And, oh, there's business rattling around. Hang on. Oh, they don't come off good. Oh, well. Yeah, the, the driver actually exploded. Hmm. I mean, I was... <laughs> I was whacking real hard. Look, I got hit with the recoil. It got hurt. I hurt myself in my confusion. <laughs> I mean, that's nuts. I thought this would be the most, like, durable. Because it's got... Well, there you go. The JBLs shrugged it off. I'm going to have one more go. Plum the Plum the that was with all my man-child might. It's still working. It was still having music being beamed to it the whole time. <laughs> I mean, you know, what What do I think of the, the kids' headphones? Like, if they're the first pair of headphones that you listen to in the morning, you go, oh, these are okay. But then you listen to good headphones and you go, oh, wow. Like, <laughs> missing out on so much. And like, you know, 50 bucks is a lot. That's proper headphone money. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, there's, there's no guarantee they'll survive a tantrum either. You know, but I do understand having headphones that are designed to not be able to be cranked up really, really loud. But then they just sound sort of okay. You know, like very okay. Kind of, 
kind of poop. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, mate, because one dollar a month, I do extra videos. Get this trash out. I, I gotta open this. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta have a little, I got the drum stream iPod here, and we're, we're gonna, we're gonna see, and, and like, I'll see us all next time. This is actually a cute thing that Frank does, right, no yelling, no yell. look, she always keeps her tail right nearby, yeah, she's very anxious about it, or maybe she likes the smell of her own brand. Frank, do you like the smell of your own brand? Frank? Uh, Alright, I'll ask in ten minutes. Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. I super appreciate you. I can write off the bumps of billionaire businesses and make videos about what I want to make. I certainly do want to play with this stinking Babur series, I stereo dock, not Lego, but everyone calls it Lego. Active base. Ooh, look out. Stupid company name. Homemade? Like, oh yeah, just like mum used to make. Oh no, my pook oh the pook shells are good. Yeah, I mean it's clever how they use like the Lego vibe to select the sort of dock so you can fit the nugget of your choice in it. And I love how yeah, you can just stick any old business in the back here. Oh, old CD players. Oh man, I've got to put in three. Ah! Close the compartment cover, mate. These directions are so complicated. It's the same thing on the back, literally the same thing on the back and, and nothing different on the sides. E. E. Ooh, why is it so dusty? How does dust get into it? Oh, it's lovingly taped together. Get there's an iPod in here. What? <laughs> what? There's an iPod in here. And a cable. What the? Di oh, I'm getting a vibe that this isn't new, guys. I bought it as new. Hang on. Oh, yeah. That's that's what we want to see. Very colorful, though. I do like it. Play charging. It's a dock, which is cool. It's like, yeah, it's cool that it charges and not only plays. We'll plug this in in a second. Well, forget the drum stream iPod. This is the guy I want to plug in there. Um, you got an aux guy. All the dock lads and... Oh, please don't have a battery in it. This isn't new, is it? Please no bats. Please no bats. Oh, good. My brand new cells. Don't mind the bleeding happening here from, from the kid's headphone video. Come on, release my boy. These are these are very soft, by the way. <laughs> you, can, you can squeeze them. Finally, someone made chewable batteries. Kids love that. Oh, are they? Oh, <laughs> I put in the wrong boys. Oh, geez, that took forever. <laughs> um, I like what it's made out of, and I realize it hasn't come with its power outlet, whatever inlet. You know, words are hard. Like, which sucks. <laughs> Was it meant to come with it? Doesn't say. It, but it gives you the specifications on what one to use, so I'm guessing it doesn't. Like, ugh. It's exciting. Mystery Nano. The, the Christmas gift for me. Good. It's a first gen too, which is awesome. <gasps> oh, no. No. Cool. Yeah, oh. You're gonna take forever. Okay, you sit over here. Uh, I just want to hear the idiot dock. Huh? What happened? Ah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it gets loud, but it doesn't sound good. <laughs> oh, jeez, the nano's woken up. John and Lisa's iPod, right? We'll smell that in a second. All right, hang on. Just to prove it to you. Auxiliary mode. <laughs> Gosh, that is shrieking. <laughs> I know it's the song as well, but... Alright, back to John and Lisa's iPod. No, 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 the gift to me. Oh, it's got nearly nothing on it. it <laughs> it's got Foo Fighters all my life on it. It's been played once. Photos? No. Audiobooks? No. <laughs> it, it has one song, which is Foo Fighters. Dude, free first gen shuffle? That works? Yeah. Yeah, breaking it up. Oh, music quiz. What? F Foo Fighters isn't music, apparently. <laughs> I'm guessing you need more than one song. <laughs> will it keep running? It will! Oh! I hate this thing. This thing's better. So you go like that, and then like that. That's neat. It's a shame that it sounds like garb, but it's built good. But it sounds like garb. Fun in a kid's room. Just doesn't respect kids' ears at all. That- it sounds vicious. Well, thanks for my- Oh my- The hot dog! Who did this to you?
Thanks for another year. I can't believe it's been two years and like a year and a half of doing this Patreon thing. So yeah, I, I keep saying thank you so much, but I, I stupidly mean it. Like, yeah, so many videos coming. Like, I've been hiding my best nuggets for later. I'm telling you, I've got some rippers. I mean, the beans are back. How, how good's that? So I'll, um, merry chombus and happy new ears and wash your ducks. No, look at that happy face. Look at that happy smile. That's the look of someone who's pooed in the hammock this week. Merry Dankmas. Yes, the bootleg AirPods episode. What a hot mess it was, and the star of the show was easily this idiot here. I mean, it's still missing its guts. Okay, okay I'm gonna leave that. What? Oh no! The microphone was just outstanding, but I only played a short little clip of it. And so as a Christmas present to all of you, thank you, like, Two years doing this now, here is the entire recording of the giant AirPod speaker. I found the beans. <laughs> oh. oh, good magnet. Uh, Air boys. Love them or hate them. These are the world's most popular Bluetooth headphones. It's pretty nuts. I remember all the memes, people like, whoa, no cable, duh, what if you lose one? And, and then it was a huge success, and then literally everyone has copied. Ah, <laughs> uh, sunrise, sunset. But Apple has heaved out some new ones. And um, it's a big change. I mean, they've been using this style of earbud way back since the iPhone 5. These ones are brand stinking new. Oh, uh, so yeah, they look goofier than ever. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, honestly, all in ears look ridiculous. The Sony's look like truffles, and we all know about the beans. But if I bust out the new Pros, you can see they take after the Pros, even in the case design. No silicone end, but a huge opening. Like, compare that to the older boys. The stems are way shorter, which is great, as I don't like how these stems rest against my ears. And finally, they have controls on them. I mean, such dazzling features. You can get going, that's good. It's the same as the Pros, and it's always it's been my favorite control scheme for wireless buds because you have to be very intentional when you use it. A lot of buds have touch controls and you just barely brush them and they'll activate it, which is annoying when you want to say refit them because they're so stinking big and they're sticking way out of your head while you're mowing the lawn. Whereas with these, you can actually play around with them. It's like you actually have to squeeze them to get them to work. I like it, but sound right, is it better than the old ones? Well, an example song I use for really low bass is Daft Punk's Doing It Right. So it goes, doing it right, everybody will be dancing and be feeling it right, everybody will be dancing and the boof, that bass note right there, it's not a big bassy bit, it's a low bassy bit. And so it's not about having headphones with heaps of bass, it's about if the equipment can actually play music that low. Yes, cheap headphones full of bass can woof it out, but it usually gets muddy. And you know, like nice headphones, everything sounds crystal clear with that big buff underneath it. 2G AirPods? Nah. It's like that note doesn't exist. I mean, it's just like the three Gs, it's totally there. I mean, it's not huge, but it's it's there, which is a huge step up. Um, the pros honestly do it the best, but it's because they've got that silicone seal. It makes a huge difference. Like closed backs nearly always have more bass than open backs. The air pressure can like intensify rather than disperse. And that actually gets into something really unique about the AirPods. Most true wireless competitors 
I like this. You know, it's like an earplug. There are fit benefits, yes, as it comes with different tips, and you could even mix and match them to fit you, because hey, like, my left ear is a slightly different shape to my right ear, and some people need to use two different ones for each ear. But there are folks out there who want open back wireless buds. You know, that they don't smash right into your ear as an earplug. They just sit on the outside. I mean, what's the idea of the Samsung beans? <laughs> They're not actually called the beans, by the way. It's just what I call them. Look at them. But the mission's the same, to make open back buds. So like, people are really mad and angry that these don't have noise cancelling. Well, the beans show us why that is. B -b because how can noise cancelling work? If there's no seal. Sound is just air pressure, right? And a simple seal can cancel out so much of the noise. You notice it when you roll up the car window. Zook quiet. And so if there's no seal, it gets straight in. I mean, it's the main thing I hate about the beans. The sound's not bad. The bass is good and the mids kind of suck. But I was excited because Samsung overly advertised that it's got noise cancelling capabilities. Well, the noise cancelling is so terrible, it's like it doesn't exist. And then people are chiming in saying, oh, well, it's like nice to have there though. Well, is it? It destroys the battery life. For nothing, basically. And it can be hard to know if it's on or not. And it makes the device more expensive with more electronic guts going on in it. It's just not worth it. There is not a lot of competition for non-earplug style in-ears, and judging by the sales, there's a lot of folks who really want this kind of thing. The only issue is fitment. If they don't fit your ears, then they don't fit. With the silicone tips, you can dial it in, but with these, it's either yes or no. And mate, we know the old saying, if they don't fit, they sound like shit. So someone might be wearing these, and they line up perfectly with their ears and sound genuinely great, but then someone else tries them, they sit at a slightly different angle, which completely changes the sound and boom, they don't like them. And that's a real thing. And it's the downside to this style of earbuds. You know, so don't be upset if they work for you and your mates stink and hate them. These fit okay for me. I actually prefer these. But it's not bad. There's no noise cancelling, but it does have adaptive EQ, which is cool. So it's using microphones to read the surrounding area and to change the audio for you. And um, spatial audio. Uh, which I never use, actually. And in fact, my first time using it, I thought my AirPods were finally dying. <laughs> because it was automatically turned on in an update, and now suddenly if I turn my head, the music gets quieter in one ear. Like, great. <laughs> I know there's music out there that's mastered for this, where it makes the most of it and really makes you feel like a big room. I just turned it off. Yeah, I'm more than happy for the music to sound the same in each ear, no matter where I'm turning my head at the time. If you enjoy it, then cool. I'll just stick to Virtual Barbershop. And of course, they've got microphones. And just for fun, mate, I'm going to toss these boys in the mix too. So like this one time, I had this totally sick idea, mate. Like, what do people appreciate? Like, breakfasts and, like, beds. And I'm like, mate, no one saw of this. I'm going to make a, a bed and breakfast. Mate, I'm going to get rich. It's such a sick idea, hey. So, like, mate, the idea's gone fully sick. There's so many beds, mate. There's, like, 50 beds. And there's breakfast everywhere, mate. It's, like, all over the bed sheets. There's, like, cups of tea all over the pillows, mate. It's fully sick. It's coming together perfect. So, like, it's the grand launch day, and it's gone really bad. Like, heaps of people have turned up, hey, but no one's willing to spend any money. Because, like, all, all I've done, mate, like, we're just in a paddock, hey? Like, we're just in a field, basically. And, and there's just beds everywhere, mate. And, like, all the bed sheets have blown off in the wind, except for the beds with breakfasts on it, mate. And it's like, you know, th this has been a disaster. This has cost me at least 50 bucks. And, like, I'm not going to be able to get this back. So, like, the event's taken, a, like, a real turn for the worst, mate. I didn't think it could get worse. So, like, all these dogs turned up, hey, and they've basically claimed all the beds... And I don't need to tell you about the breakfasts, mate. But, like, the breakfasts are fighting back, right? Because, like, they've been sitting around for weeks, mate. There's there's a reason why I put this all together for 50 bucks. Which was my life savings, to be honest, mate. And now, like, I'm pretty sure the local camp... No, no, mate, it's the, the police are here now. Because, like, th this isn't my field, man. I thought, I thought paddocks were free, hey. I'm going to jail. Well, well, well. Who happened to be the best there? Was it the several hundred dollar whiz bango air boys the beans? Or was it the 20 buck cable boys that have been hanging around in my house for gosh knows how long? And if you think that's because they put some insane microphone in this and just let, no, no, no. Oh, look, it's some horrible wish headphones that I got in the previous earbud video. Oh, it has a microphone. So I, I totally managed to get away from the police, yeah? So I, I'm hiding in a bush. And then the police show up, mate, and, like, he couldn't help himself. Hey, he saw all his beds and breakfasts and was like, mate, I've got to have a go of this. And so, like, he's hopped on the bed, mate, which is soaking wet. It's like been outside for four weeks, mate. 
He takes a bite of that three-week-old McMuffin and just starts convulsing, mate. And I went, here's my chance. And like, I didn't call for help. I've just legged it. And I'm starting to think that I'm actually a really bad person. These aren't spectacular either, but they're better than these. And you know what the secret is? You're hearing the benefits of a solid connection. That's cables for you, baby. You know, starting next year, the slogan's gonna be, bring back the headphone jack. <laughs> Imagine spending a tenth of the money and having better quality calls. Wham. Basic old Bluetooth buds sound like this, right? It's not unique to the AirPods. All right, but back to the sound. Sound-wise, I agree with a lot of reviews going around, which is like seven out of 10. Folks are saying that, okay, they're finally good now, like a conventional good. Because yeah, the old guys couldn't get that super low bass happening. These guys can. A lot of people would complain how dry these were. But now many looking at the price and going, whoa, up. That much for a 7 out of 10 listening experience. And I say, well, yeah, <laughs> you don't buy these for their sound, right? You're buying them for the convenience. And to sell the convenience they're offering, mate, it, we got to enter boring time and historical time. <laughs> Before I started doing headphone videos, I collected old vintage pairs because I wanted to see the progress. You know, if a company makes a new set of headphones, it better be better than the old ones. Otherwise, why bother? <laughs> these are the headphones that live in my lounge room. My Stax Lambdas. I think they're about 40 years old now. And these have always been ultra high-end headphones. Well, let's compare them to some brand new ultra high-end ones. So super high-end sound has existed since the late 70s? And yeah, it has. Audio's had a huge head start over video. The first things humans were able to send electronically to each other were buzzers and beeps. Remember, radio was TV at one stage. And by the 70s, recording equipment and techniques had arrived. I mean, Miles Davis is a legend. But 1950s recording quality was pretty, how's your dad? James Brown, godfather of soul. Papa's got a brand new bag is a total banger. Those dudes on the bandstand are smashing it out. Sounds really thin compared to modern tracks. It's no one's fault. It's the best they could do. It was the mid 60s. But with better recording came better equipment to enjoy it. And Stax headphones were often found in studios so the artist could hear the final mixes. So now you've had a listen to these and concluded that today's headphones are totally pointless, no progress has been made, how dare all of you? Well I mean what's the point of having these new ones then? Well I didn't show you what I had to go through to get that sound. Forget wireless mate, look at the cable on these nuggets. <laughs> it's only as long as the walk to the servo for Sangers and Dories, it's not a big deal. Alright get your headphone dongle ready with you. Uh oh. That's right, we need the energizer. There it is. Just plug this idiot in like that, mate, all right? Okay, and now what we know? Uh-oh. Yep. These need full speaker amp power. You wire these in the same way that you would big floor standing speakers. Whatever room you plug these into, they can't leave. It's wired in like an air conditioner. Oh, the elites? These literally sound amazing, plug straight into my MacBook Air. Yep, just pfft, regular old head, straight out of a phone, doesn't matter. But I mean it, these are so unfussy and make anything sound wonderful. So yeah, Hi-Fi's been out since the late 70s and absolutely modern flagship headphones are doing extra than the old boys, but a big advantage advancement has been inconvenience. Oh my Puxo, who's got this against you? So True Wireless are on the cutting edge of convenience, first and foremost. And honestly, the AirPods are really hard to beat in this department. The Sony XM4, whatever, Sony, please name things better. These sound fantastic. The bass is so lovely and they're all round nice guys. They are huge though, <laughs> like really big. And they are full blown earplugs. Like for instance, the pros, yeah, they have a silicone tip, but they aren't an earplug. They honestly just rest on your ear. I mean, they're basically the same shape as these boys. It's why I like them so much. Uh, the case honestly feels really cheap and hollow and just look at the size of it. But I'm comparing to the pros here, fair fight. So you look from the top down, you go, oh mate, come on. If anything, the, the pros are probably a little bit bigger. Yeah, but it's the thickness. <laughs> I know it doesn't look like a lot, but in a pocket, real 
estate is valuable. Hey, speak to women about pants with pockets, right? The Sonys are really chonk, and they stick in my leg because they got these hard corners to it. The AirPods just disappear. It's just smooth edges. For two years, I've been using my Pros, and they've been sharing the same pocket as my keys. Wait, right? they're built like a bullet. You can feel it's like this dense package. That's a metal hinge. They're built really well. I haven't seen another pair of buds with a case this good. Sometimes I don't think companies really respect the entire package. It's like, yeah, the Sony sound great and they cancel more noise, but they're full blown earplugs and are stinking huge. <laughs> because if I'm all about sound, I'd rather a cheap pair of over ears. And that's the thing, if you're happy to get rid of some convenience, set of in-ear KZs for out and about, Samson SR 850s for at home, and then grab a Fio BTR 3K, or I really do recommend saving up for the BTR 5, even if you've got to wait a little bit to get it just having that extra power so if you know if you do want to get crazy sets of headphones it can drive it turns your wired headphones into bluetooth ones it's got a mic for calls you can use it as a usb sound card for your pc and it all comes to the same cost as these guys but you're paying for that convenience hey and this has a better microphone to boot so there you go but man i gotta say no wires are really really nice you just pull them out and deploy them and it's really nice to be able to do that. And thanks to the shorter stems, they are really easy to get out. It's one annoying thing about these. This is this humongous stinking stem. And you know, before the hardcore audio folks really want to shoot these down on the flames, just remember these are lifestyle headphones. Hey, if you want the peak hardcore gaming experience, you don't buy a Nintendo Switch, but you can't pull a PS5 out of your backpack and start gaming within five to 10 seconds. Like a lot of us absorb content in what's called found time. You're waiting for the bus. Riding the damn bus, sitting in traffic, a two hour gap between classes, a long walk home, etc. So anything that fits perfectly into your life and when you're able to enjoy content, it's going to be the best thing ever. No, the Switch is not the best console ever made. But to many, it 100% is. If the ability to pull these out and to be listening to music within five to 10 seconds, uh, you know, sharing the same pocket as your car keys is what makes these amazing and make people want to listen to music, then that makes these the best headphones ever for them. That old saying, mate, different strokes for different folks. New AirPods, yeah, they're better than the old ones, but buy whatever makes you happy, even if it's the beans. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names on here, mate, because $1 a month, I direct the videos clear out. We're going back in time again. <laughs> the buyer's guide to true value, apparently. It's north, right? So just keep heading north. It's old mate dick. I mean, you see the miracle piano up front for the NES? You know this is gonna be saucy and good. Look at that fashion phone. Oh my hot dog. So thanks so much, mate. I'll see you all next time. Hey Frank, you gonna come over and give us a kiss? Are you gonna come over and give us a kiss, Frank? <gasps> Frank's gonna come over and give us a kiss. Yeah, no? Yes? Yeah, yes? Here, here comes Frank. Yeah. Mm. Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. I super appreciate you. And also, I do want to stress, never feel that you have to commit to every single month. Feel free to come and go as you like. I, I swear to you, I want this to be easy and fun. But it can't be easy and fun because we're visiting old mate Dick. Oh, it's so much fun finding these old catalogs. And bless the people who, who thought to save these. Because this is the crap that lands in your mailbox, is in the newspaper, and people just pull them out, you know, use them in the birdcage or the new puppy's litter, you know, like... Yeah, someone thought to preserve this because it has a, not a single crease in it. The buyer's guide to true value. It's north. Just head north, mate. Look, perfect Christmas gift ideas. Just just in time for New Year's, actually. <laughs> that memory fashion phone. God, just look at the fashion. <laughs> it's a genuine shimasu. Oh, but forget that noise, mate. Become a pop star with this portable crap. Karaoke! It looks like junk when it was new. Like, become a pop star. How, how rude of you, Dick Smith. You can't tease people's dreams like that. Oh, it's new at least. Offer expires 9091. <laughs> oh no, I don't think I'm gonna get this. The Miracle Piano. Well, like, AVGN's done this. Like, it actually looks super neat. There's like games to play along to. Like, it is actually a stinking keyboard. It, pff, man, you think what that really was? Like, <laughs> That's the cost of an actual computer just for a stinking keyboard. This is new, man. No one's creased this yet. Oh, the fountain water purifier tastes the difference. Oh, sound blaster. That's actually sick. And that, oh, it's worth real money. Oh. Oh, the sound blaster pro. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of money. And the ad lib. Yeah, like, 
Whew, man, they were stinking expensive. And now they are expensive again, especially in their box. Look at this handsome laptop. Yeah, Commodore A4 file size computer. Incredibly small, apparently. It's just the size of your whole kitchen countertop. Whoa, it has an LCD screen and more. And come on, we all know when we add and more, is that that's when we're all out of ideas. Super bass. <laughs> We've always wanted extra bass. Although an A was, that's actually like a pretty good guy. <laughs> MC Hammer's rap mic. It's got lights and everything. Wait, why is the kiddies karaoke player worth more money than MC Hammer's rap mic? I mean, it could be because it's actually got a full cassette in it. 10 pack of audio tapes in a carry bag. That's what people in 1990 were after. I have quite a few old cars and I swear all of them have this exact same stupid tape deck. They suck, by the way. <laughs> I think every school still has one of these hanging around. 300 bucks, man, that was proper. Ooh, it's got CD. That's actually a baller back in the day. <laughs> radio headphones. Look at those nuggets. And all they do is radio. Like, gosh, we have come a long ways, guys. I like how this clock's already yellowed. Yeah, look at that telly. Black and white with radio. <laughs> I mean, I was just saying in the last show, like, how, like, radio was TV. Look at... I mean, that's such a shed TV. That's for Dad. Got a carry handle. It's got a headphone jack! Bring back the headphone jack! Oh, you can still buy beta tapes! Oh, poor Sony. God, and, like, proof, just because it's 1990 doesn't mean the 80s have gone away. <laughs> It takes about two years for the last decade to wash off. There's a lot of Shimasu stuff. Oh, calculators. R yeah, answering machines. Gosh, I'm so glad that, like, I can experience this amazing internet age, but remember having a remote answering machine like this. How much fun it was recording a new family thing, just going, it's the family. <laughs> and no one calls us anyway. <laughs> Solutions to old problems. The fax switch. Oh, look how they spelled it. Fax. Just simply plugs into your phone line and automatically switches between the phone and fax when a fax is detected. That is actually totally a humongous thing. I mean, 300 bucks. I remember being a kid and mum going, get off the internet, I have to make a phone call. Otherwise it goes, They are still selling these exact stupid calculators to this day. That one's pretty baller. It's actually a PC. Oh, they were giggling when they wrote that one out. Eh? And you can still buy printer calculators like this. And I, I'm pretty sure they're still the same money. I've actually got some really old calculators on the way. They're nuts because they're basically like the foundation of modern computers. The, the calculator race led to the PC race. Oh, look at this big nuggety beast. We had one of these as a kid. Just this, you know, generic looking PC, big stinking floppy guy. I would love this setup today. But not at these prices. These printers suck. They're charming, but they suck. Look at that dust cover. It's a, it's a computer condom. That's what it is. Oh, this- Oh, I didn't think there'd be a Mega Drive here! Yeah, man, I love the first gen ones. It's got a headphone jack! Bring back the headphone jack! It's in stereo, too. If you have one of these OG Mega Drives, well, some people call it Genesis, but plug headphones in and it's in stereo. So it goes like, Sega, it's totally baller. Great game, couldn't care, couldn't care. I don't know, it's okay. Couldn't care. Uh, stinking Game Boy though, man. Stinking crab computer. Little smart driver. Does it have indicators? It does! They're not gonna use it. Look, it's the same video monitoring systems the banks are still using. Oh, thrust your children into the stresses of stardom. But look at that electric violin. You just know one day kids are just gonna use it as a dirt shovel in the backyard. Just, just <laughs> that's what kids do. Oh, and then, and then the stuff for dads. The President P300. There it is! We found the true value! Outstanding. Well, the 1990s seemed like a fever dream now. Well, thanks so much for supporting me. Thanks for another year. The mess is rolling on. And, um, you know... Oh, my old dog.